in pursuit. Vehicle failed to stop. And out in force. <laughs> this is police interceptors. Stay there as you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime fighting units. Stay there! Please We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, 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 on to five, three, four. On the hunt with their dog units. Right, mate, right, mate. Ringside as they go toe to toe with the bad guys. Get off your legs! Put your hand behind your back! Brace your spine, everybody! Buckle up. Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Get your arms up now! Another day at the office. Coming up, a suspected drug dealer gets a friendly wake up call. Please! Cleggy takes a blunt approach to gun crime. What do you know about that? And John cracks down on a serial drug driver. Every year in England alone, police seize around five and a half tonnes of illegal drugs, a key method being the raid. <laughs> when it comes to making an entrance, police use officers specially trained to go in hard. Police! And fast. <laughs> On an ice-cold afternoon in Runcorn, North Cheshire, Jim Hunt and the team are kitting up to raid a tower block on the outskirts of town. There's intel someone might be selling drugs from one of the flats. The suspects are dealing in uh, primarily cannabis, um, and there's also been some recent information to suggest that the occupants are uh, now starting to broaden their uh, horizons and dealing in heroin and cocaine. With concerns the suspects might have graduated to Class A's, the team have secured a warrant for a forced entry, and it's just the job for Jim. Part man, part rhino. This former tank driver's been on the force for nearly two decades and is method of entry qualified. Translation, he does doors. When you put a door in like this, you don't know if they feel threatened, if they've got themselves tooled up, because you just don't know what's behind that door. Arriving at the tower block, Jim unloads his own tools. A handheld battering ram and about three foot of steel crowbar for those extra stubborn doors. With several PCSOs stationed outside the block and other interceptors ready to follow, Jim leads the charge. Police aim to get through a door with one swift strike to confuse whoever's inside so they don't have time to ditch their gear. Just as well, Jim is not known for his subtlety. As the team flood the flat, Jim scours the rooms for hidden suspects. He knows crooks can take desperate measures to ditch evidence. Welcome clear. And even escape. Other officers have found a man and a woman, but there's no sign of any drugs. Yet. Time for Jim to apply a little tactical pressure. If there is any gear in here, now is the best time to tell us because we're going to pull this flat, flat apart, basically. Any gear in here, mate? Speak now or forever, hold the peace. Where's the, where's the drugs, mate? You might as well tell us because we're going to find it, aren't we? If you want a dog maul and all over the house, you might as well because at the end of the day, it will be found. We've got a drugs to run route. Experience tells Jim that if you keep pushing, someone is going to crack. If you want to say something, mate, now's the best time to say it. You're just prolonging it for everybody, aren't you? Sorry, even my shit, man. Show me, fella. Come and show me. Come on. Come, mate. Where is it? It's not my shit, mate. OK, fair enough. Where is it? Off the that stuff there. Yeah, he's coming yeah. back now. If you want to wait for him, he's All right, go back and sit on there, mate. Right, listen, he's coming now, don't you? Do you want to sit there? 
The lad's insisting the drugs have been left in the flat by a mate who's coming back any minute to collect his stash. Well, we've got um, what we believe to be um, possibly heroin and cocaine, scales and other related paraphernalia in the property, which is conducive with, um, with dealing. Whether it belongs to the bloke in the flat or his mystery mate, it's a sizeable hoard. Nearly £800 worth of coke and heroin, perfectly presented. And they've been put into white bags on the corner of the bag, um, tied in a knot, and then the end cut off, which is the standard MO for drug dealing. As the team weigh up their find, someone arrives at the door. But is it the mystery mate? You come to the electric meter? <laughs> Uh, I think probably now is the, uh, the most uh, inopportune time you could probably find him a brain, my mate. Unless the mystery mate is also a master of disguise, he's a no-show. Meanwhile, as well as finding the drugs, the team have also discovered a load of cash and some SIM cards. And the PCSO stationed outside have recovered a phone thrown from the balcony. It's a result, but not everyone's impressed. It's, it's not... The, the shit's not mine, you know what I mean? Do your job. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling us how to do our job, mate, OK? Because we are doing a job. And you've got some questions to answer, haven't you, mate? No. No, I told you what I need to tell you. Did you check the camera there this morning? You see his car pulling out this morning when he left here at 8 o'clock? He's still claiming the drugs belong to his mate, but Jim's standing firm. The account that you've given us, mate, it doesn't change a single thing, does it? He's still under arrest, he's still going to the police station, yeah, no, and we've no, still no. recovered drugs from your address. Yeah, no, no, that mate, OK? Not, yeah. So quit your whining, mate, because you've got nothing to whine about, have you, at the moment? Yeah, no, but what I'm saying okay. is, this, mate, if you went and looked into it... Yeah, then, yeah and we'll follow up lines of inquiry, mate. I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. That is not my shit, mate. OK. You're the most unluckiest person in Runcorn, then, aren't no, you? No, no, mate, I'll let me... Mention. Everyone has Class A drugs in their house, no, don't they, mate? No, let me... It's not wise to lock horns with Jim. I love the bone down now. Right. Stressed out, love. Sure you are. Getting caught with Class A drugs may well be stressful. Whether they belong to you or not, you could still be facing up to seven years in prison for possession. So this pair are off to Runcorn Nick for a spot of Q&A and a taste of Cheshire Interceptor's famous hospitality. Thanks. Talk about chicken. Yes, sit down. You can have one now. You said you could have one, though, on the way down. They're in a flat, but we've got no, not good lighting now. That's all. That's two suspects collared and a load of evidence that could lead to more arrests. We've got uh, a notebook with amounts of money written on it. We've got cash, we've got the drugs. We've got all the rated paraphernalia. We've got a, basically a, like a dealer's toolkit. We've also got um, phones in there which can be forensically analysed and that'll give us a wealth of information as to uh, uh, what's on there in relation to uh, texts or voicemails or whatever. The lad arrested in the flat has been charged with possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, whilst the woman is currently under investigation. Police are looking into the mystery mate, but it's been a successful raid, especially for master door knocker Jim. It's always uh, always good in MOE circles, method of circles, to do uh, one it wonders. So I always call it, uh, let's get a chisel in the orcs and uh, do it in one it. Coming up, Dan's latest collar gets a little personal. You have no bad you can right. yeah. hey. A route around the bushes bears fruit of the illegal variety. <laughs> and John plays catch-up with a suspected drug driver. That was it! Every year across the UK, more than 60 road users are killed as a result of people taking drugs and then driving. And now interceptors are dealing with a growing number of repeat drug drive offenders. As John Gardner prowls Runcorn and his unmarked 3 Series, a call from HQ brings a sense of deja vu. We've just got a vehicle that's just hit the NPR cameras. We've already had him four times now for drug driving. He's got no licence and he has no insurance. And it's John that's caught the fella on two of the four occasions he's been done for drug driving. So, he's a little bit of a target of mine at the moment. Clearly the bloke hasn't learned his lesson, but he'll wish he had. 
because after 22 years busting mashed motorists, this six-foot-one law machine has developed a single-minded approach to hunting down its prey. Yeah, so we're trying to get him and uh, get him into prison, get him remanded, get him off the road, he's a danger. And John's in luck. Less than a mile away, fellow interceptor Chris Gleave has spotted their target car disappearing into a business estate. Yeah, no, we can't. It's one way in, one way out. I'll make my way up that way, mate. The target's trapped in the car park, unable to drive out without running into arch nemesis John. But when the big man pulls in, the driver's decamped and legged it. Just to let you know, he's uh, he's come into this area and he's just dumped the car in the middle of the road. He's gone through with no entry. The bloke may have given John the slip, but he's run straight into the hands of Chris Gleave. He's been cuffed, drug tested, and the results are in. At the minute, you've tested positive for cocaine on our uh, roadside swipe, OK, so you're locked up OK at the minute. Sadly, this fella's heard it all before. This is the fifth time now, Sandeep. The fifth time you've been, been caught driving with no licence and drug driving. You've got no licence to drive, you've got no insurance, and you drive... No Listen, you're driving whilst under the influence of drugs, which impairs your driving heavily. You're going to cause an accident and you're going to kill someone, Sandeep. Some people never seem to learn. A conviction for drug driving can get the offender off the road and in the nick for up to six months. But add possession and you could be talking years. A police dog's already sniffed out some silver foil he's dropped near the bushes. But Chris reckons he's seen him ditch more stuff. All I've got is that, that foil on the there. Foil. I can't see anything obvious. Dog's indicated in there. Mate, she, she, she's, she's, not, she's not a drug dog, so she's indicating on human scent, but... Yeah. It's I've there. not, I've literally, I've not been in there. I've, I lit, there was foil there. Yeah, I've had that off there, yeah, foil that was there. down here. Foil How far do you think it went? Mate, it, it didn't go far, and if it did, it's landed in this somewhere. Oh, yeah. There it is. There <laughs> you are, it's going to drop down here. Yeah, there's some more here. He's got a ball as well. Yeah, there it is. You got it. Silver foil is a classic sign of drugs. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> and other stuff. But one of the wraps contains something that'll do more than soothe a chesty cough. Yeah, there's a bit of rock in there, isn't there? Oh, that'll do, mate. Crack cocaine. So what are these going to be for? There is house keys. What does it say? Yeah. Keys to the madam. Keys to Why the madam. No comment. So he's now added suspected possession of Class A's to yet another arrest for drug driving. Listen, where you've thrown your keys, Listen, we found that foil and it's got some crack cocaine in it, OK. So at the minute, at the minute, listen to me, OK, we're under arrest on suspicion of possession of, of a Class A drug, OK, so you're going to have to say... The fella's now off to Runcorn Nick, where blood tests will confirm the level of drugs in his system. There'll also be a surprise visit from the familiar face of John Gardner, who's on his way back to join them at the station. He could very easily kill somebody. He could plough his car into somebody walking along the street. And looking at the times of which he's driving as well, he's during school times, so you've got kids on these roads as well. Let's get him in, get him tested, and let's get this man in front of the courts, bang to right. Arriving at the Nick, it's time to reveal an old friend. Hello, we meet again. Is this not the third time now? Five, John. I know which third time I've done it. Somehow, he doesn't seem too pleased to see John. Perhaps that's to be expected, as blood tests in custody came back positive and the fellow was charged with drug driving and possession. It's little more than 24 hours since John Gardner and Chris Gleave locked up their persistent drug driver. He's now out on bail, and John fears he might be up to his old tricks again. Leave me uniform 229, what was the last? The um, BMW X5 that um, was locked up yesterday for drug driving and no licence has just gone. 
53. Right, Roger. We'll get sorted on that straight away then. What's happening now is the gentleman who we locked up last night uh, for drug driving is now possibly out in another vehicle and it's, hit, it's just hit Ellesmere Port coming back this way. So the cops know this is a route the man takes and whilst his car was seized during his arrest, he does have access to this other vehicle, a BMW X5. As John arrives at the stakeout point to head the car off, fellow interceptors Gordy and Dan are already parked up, lying in wait. Hey, I'm Christian. John, John, we'll go back, you get in front. We've got the wall is covered at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, go, you go back, he's, he's, he's reversing back. The team are trying to tuck themselves out of sight of the approaching X5, but John doesn't want to risk compromising his view. Carl, get, hold on, I just want to get John. Just get John back, because that wall's a cover. John, mate, just come back a little We can't see him if he comes off the park. That's what I'm saying. All right, just, well, just come and have a chat with us a minute. OK. Right. This lad, he's been locked up five times in a month, OK? Yeah. All for Section 5A, no licence, no insurance. Yesterday, he tried to give us a swerve. Yeah. John, be empty. John thinks he's eyed the X5 race past. That was it! The team now need to catch up and get it stopped. Got it in front there now. The car's in their sights. John, we've got a block on. Two PM's not enough. The team have no clear view to confirm who's driving, but they can't leave it to chance. Now, OK. You get right behind him. John swings in front, and the car seems to be towing the line. But is it our drug driver? It's a female, it's a female driving, female driving. Hello. Hiya. PC Gardner. 116, just confirm female driver and no persons on board. It's the right motor, but it's not their man. It's his missus. You understand the reason why we're stopping this car, don't you? Uh, yeah, I understand. Yes, you do, don't you? OK. Can you understand what sort of situation he's causing you now? Yeah, yeah. OK. But what I'm trying to say to you is make sure you do not give him access to any vehicles, otherwise you're going to get in trouble. She's been spoken to. She's even just said about uh, yesterday... She, when she went to the shop, she took the other keys with her and told him not to drive the vehicle. So, having been arrested five times already, perhaps John's drug driver has finally learnt his lesson. I'm just glad it's not him driving. Uh, hopefully, he, he realises that he can't be driving. So, in a way, we want to get this gentleman off the road, make sure he doesn't... Maybe that he's learnt now not to drive. Perhaps he's, perhaps he's just not driving because he hasn't got a vehicle at the moment. But... In a way, I'm glad it's not him. And thankfully, it's unlikely John will be running into his drug driver for some time, as in court, the man has been sentenced to 18 weeks in prison for drug driving, possession of Class A drugs and driving without a licence or insurance. He was also banned from driving for three years. An interceptor's work is rarely clear-cut. When emotions are running high... It's not always clear what's happened and who's to blame. It's just oh, no, 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 is it? yeah. Yeah. Piecing it all together, it's just part of the job. So you yeah. okay, fella? Right. Yeah. Cheers. It's the early hours of Sunday morning. Patrolling Chester in their unmarked three series, interceptors Neil Clegg and Michael Clark have had some worrying news. Information's come in that there's a male outside of his home address and the information is he's cut his own throat with a piece of glass. Witnesses report that the lad who's cut himself is acting aggressively and may be drunk. After a quarter of a century on the force, rugby fan Cleggie's tackled pretty much every kind of wrongen. And he knows well enough that when someone's kicking off, there's no telling what might have happened, so you go in prepared. Leave uniform 112, where uh, we are carrying taser. I did shout up. 
Dan Halliwell and Gordon Morris are also en route. We've got two medics on board the uh, double crew taser cars as well, Libby uniforms. Dan and Gordy are first to arrive. There he is, it's here, it's here, it's here. The lad's in a right state, but there's more to this man than self inflicted injury. You all right, mate? It's the police. I've been Back. kicked off of my missus. He's I've been, been battered. Um, battered by two people. I don't know who they are, though. Nice, OK. Been kicked in the face. It's the lad who may have injured himself, but his girlfriend's claiming he's also been attacked by a couple of blokes. You're saying someone's assaulted you? Yeah. Any descriptions? You all right, mate? Calm down, mate. Calm You're down. All right. You're all right. No one's going to hurt you. We'll get you sorted. He's got superficial injuries to his neck. We'll have an ambulance, mate. Cancel firearms. The other team arrive, and Cleggie tries to get more details from the girlfriend. Right, so basically you're shouting, you're having a, a discussion with him, a row, whatever you want to call it. This person on the bike... has kicked do, off. Do you know who that is? No. Right, so they've seen you arguing, and basically they've taken it in upon themselves to, stick, to have a go at him. To stick up from right. basically, yeah. So, according to his girlfriend, the lad was attacked whilst they were having a heated argument. Cleggie investigates the alleyway where the attack took place. Bits of glass, right? Yeah, there you are. See on the ball here, you've got... There's your wine bottle. There's the wine that's on the wall there. So there's a uh, little bit of glass here. So the story is that they've been coming through this, uh, this alleyway here. They've been having quite a heated discussion. And uh, according to the witness, um, a male has been coming the other way on a push bike, uh, witnessed the argument and uh, at that point, he's then uh, taken it upon himself to intervene and uh, dish out some summary justice on, uh, on our alleged victim. He's then got angry, smashed the bottle against the wall that he was carrying and, uh, and then begun to assault himself. There have been allegations from witnesses that the lad may have actually been assaulting his girlfriend when the attack took place. So Dan and Gordy have had to arrest him whilst they get to the bottom of what really happened. About I don't give a f what you say. But he's not going quietly. Right. No bed to you will do. Bed to me. All right. Give a f okay, good. I'm war. Get me done for the message. I'm war because I've done nothing wrong. Right. You feel better. I was saying, yeah, pricks, yeah. yeah. That made my girlfriend go away. All right. On purpose. Cool. You no bed. You can right. We are. Hey. Yeah. What? No bed. Not bad. Kevin. Under arrest for Section 5, public no, order as well. Really, no. right. The lad's now managed to talk his way into a public disorder charge. Hopefully some TLC from the paramedics will calm him down. He's going to be going to the County of Chester, where he'll be examined, first of all, to make sure he's, he's safe and well. And then once he's fit to be released, he can then be taken to the police station and spoken to regarding the allegations. What started with reports of a man cutting his own throat has now developed into two cases of suspected assault. Every, every job that you go to will always be slightly or if not completely different than you first thought or you were first told about. Police are looking into the identities of the lad's attackers. There was no evidence to prove that he had assaulted his girlfriend. He recovered from his injuries and received a caution for his aggressive behaviour. Coming up, Pekka pats down a surprisingly eager suspect. Do you want me to drop your pants or anything? A fleeing motor gives Mike the runaround. I have no idea where I'm going, Gal. And Cleggie and the team tackle a suspected armed man. And why is somebody carrying that in the waistband? In the past year, Cheshire Police have seen a massive 800% increase in drug driving arrests, thanks to the drug wipe. Impressive results, but before you wipe them, you've got to catch them. And on a Tuesday night on the A34, a runaway driver's causing all sorts of problems for interceptor Rich Woodward, a.k.a. Pecker. A football referee in his spare time, this mild-mannered copper has over a decade of police experience. And when he's not wielding his red card, he's blasting his blue lights. 
There's a drugs marker on the car, and it's already failed to stop for cops in Staffordshire. With Pekka right behind, the motor hits 70 miles an hour in a 50. Swerves around cars into oncoming traffic and speeds dangerously through red lights. Luckily for Pekka, helps on its way in the form of Al Robinson and Mike Jennings. I have no idea where I'm going, Al. 90 degree band. You're telling me where to go. Pekka might just have to hold out a little longer. Mike Satnav is having a few issues, but at least he's got out. Where am I going? Right. Right here, and then double back on yourself left yeah, at the giveaway. Mike needs to get on the road ahead of the fleeing driver, who's already managed to evade another county's force. The Staffordshire patrol has pursued a vehicle onto Cheshire. We're all now making to the area where the pursuit is currently, which is the other side of Camerton. Now on track, Mike and Al are closing in. We're not that far off this now. But as the pursuit speeds towards them... The last it is, um, sort of back on itself now in the general direction of Cheshire. The suspect ditches his car and legs it. And Mike's not too happy about it. Don't say decamp. I think he just has. Mike doesn't like to miss out. With the lads arriving a little late to the party, Peck has already caught his man on foot and detained him in a car. Hi, Richard. Hello, Jenna. Hi, mate. How did that go, Pekka? Oh, just about to drive into the backyard, to remember yesterday. <laughs> Trouble found you, did it? Typical, just when you're about to get off work, a pursuit comes your way. Pekka thinks he might know what's behind the bloke's dangerous driving. So uh, the driver's telling me he hasn't got a licence or any documents for the vehicle. Um, he also smells very strongly of cannabis, so we're just carrying out a roadside saliva sample, which I suspect if I was a gambling man, that's probably only positive for cannabis. And Pecker's bang on the money. The drug wipe shows positive, but even when there's bad news to break, Pecker's manners are impeccable. Hi, mate. Uh, just a quick one. As well as the obviously dangerous driving and uh, having no licence, you're also under arrest on suspicion of Sorry, yeah, driving over the prescribed really. limit uh, of cannabis. Anything you say for right. The man was charged with dangerous driving, no insurance, and failing to provide a specimen at custody. The drug wipe is the major factor in Cheshire's annual drug driving arrest rate, leaping from 70 to 530 in the space of a year. It removes the element of doubt, making it simpler for interceptors to bang up the bad guys. But some cases are anything but straightforward. And on another patrol, this time behind the wheel of an unmarked 3 Series, Pekka spots a motor that's aroused his suspicions. A VW Golf in front. He's just got a brake light out. And put his toe down briefly, got up to about 40 odd in the 30, so we'll have a quick word with him. 11 years prowling the roads have shown a bit of bad behaviour can point to something more serious. So the blue lights are going on. The car's pulled over, inside a female driver and a male passenger. Hello, you all right? I just stopped because you've got a brake light out of the back, that's all, Chuck. Father, I didn't know I'd got a brake light out. No, no, you're obviously looking at the road, aren't you? So I'm sat behind you, I can let you know. Pecker's cop intuition is telling him something's not quite right. We just come grab a seat in the car for a couple of minutes while we check your details. You got a brake light out, out, yeah. And then for some reason you'd been really along quite nicely. Then you suddenly sort of put your foot down, got to about 45, hey, 50 odds. Just, hey, do you want me to tell you why? Because I was just telling them about the car because mm -hmm. bought it. Okay, who's the chap that's with you? Oh, well, it's a friend of a friend, and I was just dropping him off. Okay, friend of a friend. Her story is that she's giving her friend of a friend a ride home and that she was only speeding to show off the superior handling of her new car. Pekka's not convinced. Could you do me a vehicle, person and DL check, please, on back lane in Congleton? He runs the driver's name past HQ, which reveals the woman is 46 years old. Knowing drugs can often be the cause of dodgy driving, Pekka gets out the wipe. Just keep your mouth nice and wide for me. And a few minutes later, comes the verdict. Well, my little device shows positive for um, cocaine. 
So the bad news is you're going to be arrested on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle whilst over the prescribed limit for a specified drug. So she's failed the test for cocaine. But what about her friend of a friend in the car? What's the name of the lad that's with you? Mark. Mark. Back in a sec, Chip. Now to find out a little more about this Mark. What's your name, buddy? Turns out his name isn't Mark at all. Interesting. So our middle-aged driver doesn't seem to know her young companion very well. But does he know her? What's her name? One more stuff can tell you. What well, do you not know? No. Interesting. Well, that's one way of putting it. Backups arrive to help whilst Pekka searches the car. But he doesn't have far to look. There's a stash of weed practically on display on the centre console. At the moment, mate, you've been detained for the purpose of a drug search. Who does a cannabis belong to? You know, not me. Not yours? No, it's not mine. Did you know it was there? No, what, no. No? I wasn't aware that there was any drugs in the car, to be honest. Well, it smells like cannabis, doesn't it? And there's a grinder down by your feet. He's not very observant, this bloke. And now it's his turn to be searched. Have you got anything in your pockets that you shouldn't have? Nothing at all. Anything sharp? Not anything to be concerned all, about? Not on me is money, that's it. He's proving a lot more helpful with this search. Do you want me to drop your pants or anything? <laughs> Not in the middle of the road, no. <laughs> Just thinking it saves you having to see something. Have you been searched before? Yeah, of course. Maybe too helpful. Yeah, we, uh, if we pull that, then I'll pull that back so you can see in. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, yeah. I know you don't want it, like, but... No, no. If you want me to. Definitely too helpful. Back to the car. A further search doesn't uncover any more drugs, but does reveal a games console and more than two grand in cash which the lad claims is for buying a car. So lots of pieces to this puzzle, but none of them quite fit. The fact that she doesn't know who he is or where she's taken him to, that's suspicious in the first place. Does a normal person carry in excess of two grand around with an Xbox in the middle of the night with someone they don't know? Doesn't really seem normal to me. We quite often find that small minor offences, once you start doing a bit of digging, you get suspicious, that's why you'll start doing some searching, which is why you end up finding the, uh, the drugs and the large amount of cash. The woman was found guilty of drug driving. She was handed fines of around £200 and has been banned from getting behind the wheel for one year. No further action was taken against her young passenger for the drugs. However, the games console and the cash were seized, as the man could not provide ownership. He later failed to turn up in court to prove it. The mystery over why two people in the same car didn't appear to know each other or know where they were going remains unsolved. It's the small hours of Sunday morning, kicking out time for the bars and clubs of Chester. The big blue van is in town to hoover up any troublemakers. Nights like this, the team are usually called in to deal with the drunk and disorderly. But tonight brings something far more serious. Gordy and Dan are being pulled off the street to join Cleggy and Clarky in the van, with reports of a fight breaking out at a nearby house party. And it seems that one of the brawlers may be armed. One of the males has had a gun which has been discarded underneath a car. And uh, he, he's made off. News of the gun means this could be a life-threatening situation. Two female officers are already at the house and in urgent need of backup. The firearm squad is on its way, but the van, with its team of taser-trained interceptors, is closer to the scene. When the boys arrive, the fight's already been broken up by the cops. The bloke who had the gun has been arrested and the officers are trying to track down his mate who's run off. Dan and fellow interceptor Becky Lawson quiz one of the party lads who claims he was attacked by the armed man. And then it was all kicking off and that. And then, and then the, the geezer in the hat and the um, Adidas jacket, yeah. yeah. We saw him, we saw, he was backing up here, he was backing up, he was backing up, and he come behind his car, and then we were at like the bottom of the car and he, he stuffed something under the car, like he, he sort of put something under the car and then he come back, come back. And then we were like, what are you found under the car? And then he 
right hook to me in the face, hit me in the face. It was an act of self defence. I hit him back, you know, and then we got into a little scuffle. Now, the please. one that's in the car, yeah, he punched me in the face, and there's an act of self defence, I hit him back. The gun the bloke may have been trying to hide is now lying on the floor next to the car. Thanks to Becky, who was one of the first on the scene. Had one guy against the wall, Courtney took the other one out here, and then the guy said there's a gun under the car. So he's then reached under the car and grabbed the gun, so I've had to push him across and out of the way, right. and then just shoved him down the side to get him away. Becky was able to disarm the bloke, but his gun still needs to be made safe. We'll just leave it in situ for the time being, for just for the firearms to come along, and it's been cocked, so the hammer's back. So, you know, if it's got a dodgy trigger on it or anything like that, any disturbing of it, will uh, could set it off. The bloke who was wielding the gun was also found to be carrying a stash of drugs. We just separated them all. What was it? Cannabis. Okay. And his mate is still on the loose. What car did you come here with, mate? A Ford. Yeah, one colour. Six. The team reckon they can track him down by finding his motor. Ford Fiesta, what colour? Black. Where's he parked it? Round the corner. Literally on the next street? No, literally here. Up there in the boys. Why is he run off? Oh, no. Do you want to listen to the story? No, you're under caution, mate, so wait to be interviewed. But as the teens search for the motor, up pops their wanted man. Where have you been? I've been really chased by all the boys. I've been punched up. Feel the back of my neck. Where is... I'd rather not if you don't mind. Cleggy cuts to the chase. What do you know about that? I don't mind. I didn't say it was, did I? I said, what do you know about it? Oh, I don't know nothing about it. I've never seen that in my life. Oh. Why? Strange. Come and have a seat in our van, young man. I'll have a chat with you. Yeah. Suspected of being involved in the fight, the lad's arrested and will be joining his mate down the nick. But Cleggy's biggest concern is still the gun, which may not be all it seems. Basically, our colleagues from Firearms have just made this safe. It's actually uh, what we call a BB gun, a ball bearing gun. So, for all intents and purposes, it's like an air pistol. Um, as you can see, it would have originally been orange in colour to denote its. its um, a ball bearing gun, but uh, someone's taken the time to actually paint it black in an attempt to make it look like a, a proper firearm. I mean, you've got to ask yourself the question, why is somebody at three o'clock in the morning who's at a, a house party carrying that in the waistband of their, uh, of their trousers, um, if not to intimidate or scare other people? And ultimately, if they did come up against the police and had, had the first patrol been here, been one of our firearms colleagues, this, uh, this could have been a completely different outcome. Whilst no further action was taken against the bloke who legged it, his mate was given a caution for possession of a Class A drug and for wielding an imitation firearm in public. Still to come, as Jono clamps down on a boozed-up motorist... Yeah, we've got it at 11. I'll get it stopped in a minute. ...reality dawns. What we need to do is go down to the police station, all right? Around one in six deaths on our roads is linked to alcohol. Key to reducing this shocking number is getting drink drivers breath tested and off the road as fast as possible. 11 p.m. Saturday night, and whilst the night owls of Cheshire head out to party, Jono's keeping the peace on the M62. Police have just received anonymous intel about a motorist who might be boozed up. Hey, the uh, drink driver after just activated the camera literally about a mile ahead of us. So we're just trying to find it in the traffic now. With 16 years on the force, Jono's seen his fair share of dodgy driving. And when it comes to a drink driver, he's not one to hang about. A couple of miles up the motorway, he spots his target. Yeah, we've got it. He's bound just uh, at 11. I'll get it stopped in a minute. The intel might well be wrong, but Jono can't leave it to chance.
In the car, a male driver, a woman, a lad in the back, and a suspicious odour. There is a smell of alcohol coming from the vehicle. Some have been drinking. Yeah, you had anything to drink, sir? Uh, I've had two, yeah. All right. Just need to do a quick breath test with you. Jono gets the driver into his car for a blow on the breathalyzer. Someone's rang us and reported the driver of this Range Rover might be driving under the influence of alcohol. Have you been anywhere good today? Uh, yes, I've been to a party. Had to do one of these before? Uh, yes, I have, yeah. OK, I'll keep hold of it. Big deep breath and blow. OK, thank you very much. One big breath and in seconds you've got a result. OK, it's showing a reading of 52 micrograms of alcohol in your breath, the legal limit being 35. OK, so you are over the drink drive limit, OK? Shit. So at this moment in time, you are under arrest and suspicion of driving with excess alcohol. And if you do say maybe, given over this, OK? Over, Roughly, yes. Okay. What we need to do Shit. is go down to the police station, all right? That one extra pint makes all the difference. OK, just sit tight. Who's in the car with you? My son. Right, and who's in the passenger seat? My wife. So not only has he failed the roadside breathalyzer, he's also got his family in tow. Nevertheless, to prove the driver has had too much drink to drive, the cops need to test him again on the evidential machine at the Nick. But since alcohol levels drop with every passing minute, Jono's got to get this bloke back and on that machine as soon as possible. But arriving at the gates, the fella suddenly starts behaving strangely. Sit up for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Right, what are you doing? <sighs> hey? Why are you doing that to your arms? Stop tensing up, you're going to hurt yourself. Sorry. Hey? Nice. Come stand out of the car for two seconds. Yeah. Let me get out. Yeah? Come stand out of the car. <laughs> really out of the car. Hey? Stand oh. up. Well, let me go. Right, sit down. Yeah, we're just outside custody. Does anyone who can come out to the main gate give me an assistance? Yeah, I've had to extract him from the car because he's, he's just tented up against us now. Uh, just see if someone in custody can come out to the main gate and give us a lift. Cops know some drivers can try all sorts to delay that essential blow on the big breathalyzer. But this guy appears to be having real problems. In custody, Jono's struggling to get the bloke's cuffs off. <clears throat> I'll just get the things off. Oh, really? I can't do, I can't do them when relax. you're tenting up against us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Right. Thank okay. you, thank you. Right, just relax. Right. Okay. And when the fella's finally prepped to take his breath test, there's another setback. Do you now agree to provide two specimens of breath no. for analysis? No. Not until I've taken legal advice. He's decided he wants to hold off the breath test until he's spoken to a lawyer. OK, sit, sit down there. Uh, refused to provide, Sarge. Uh, he's been asked on two different occasions to provide. He's been warned and he's refused, saying he won't do it until he takes legal advice. It'll take a little time for a legal advisor to show up, but in the meantime, he's been given a copy of the police codes of practice. Right, no police officer should at any time do or say anything with the intention of dissuading any person who is entitled to legal advice. Yeah, he's going to get legal advice. Right, I'm entitled to legal advice. The, the bloke may be right. However, police can breath test a suspect before they receive legal counsel, and refusing to give a specimen without reasonable grounds is in itself an offence. sat at a chair saying he doesn't know what's happening yet next minute he's reading the fine print on the uh, the codes of practice in custody so i'm quite happy he knows exactly what he's doing so uh, basically we don't know the level of intoxication he's got in his uh, breath stream because he won't give us a sample so uh, the magistrates will look at it they'll look at the manner of the driving they'll look at the roadside reading they'll look at his previous history uh, and then they will come up with a, an appropriate driving ban or sentence for him the man later pleaded guilty to failing to provide a sample at custody He's been banned from driving for 14 months and fined over 700 quid. Over a period of 10 years, more than 55,000 people have been convicted for failing to provide a specimen. Proof that you can delay the test, but you can't avoid the result. 
Fancy some more of that? Car Crash TV is next over on Spike or right here on Channel 5. All new traffic cops on the edge of booking drivers for every offence going. Drunk, underage, speeding, it's all in there at 10. But new next, inside the tube, we're going underground to where noisy trains and impressive architecture collide. <laughs> In pursuit. Vehicle failed to stop. And out in force. <laughs> this is police interceptors. Stay there as you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime fighting units. Stay there! Police retainer! We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, left, left onto the five, three, four. On the hunt with their dog units. Right at me, right at me. Ringside as they go toe to toe with the bad guys. Buckle up. Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Another day at the office. Coming up Tom versus Door. Don't mess with Jim and Rich. Get your arms out! Get your arms out now! And an epic drug bust. We've also got cocaine and a darker substance, and it's possibly we're looking at heroin. You'd be forgiven for thinking an interceptor's job is an all-action affair. Put your arm behind your back! But for every five-car takedown... Out the car! There are whole days just sat around. You want to be out there doing stuff, but we've got to wait. And that's just the nature of this job. It's early afternoon in Warrington. Tim Powell and Tom Spowage are primed to stop a car linked to dealing. You receive some information that there's a vehicle uh, travelling to uh, this location and uh, there's likely to be a large quantity of uh, Class A drugs on the vehicle. Tim's a fan of fast driving, but he's also a fan of Port Vale, so he's used to waiting around for something to happen. See, now we're just waiting for a little bit more information uh, to find out when this vehicle's travelling towards us. It's a big op. Units from Cheshire and Merseyside are moving to strategic positions, preparing to intercept the target. Plan A, box it in. Nine times out of the ten, Plan A never happens. Plans quite quickly change. Tom's a refined copper. When he's not chasing villains, he loves sitting down with a glass of port and a mature cheese which will be more exciting than this. <sighs> Six hours in, the suspect car still hasn't shown. You know that plan A you had? I think I'm plan Z yeah. now. It's what it's like day in, day out. If it all went to plan, it'd bore him, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would, yeah. of course it would. At last, they're on the move. Fresh intel has come in, but it's bad news. Unfortunately, we've missed the drop. A major haul of Class A's has slipped through the net. But there's one ray of hope. We've got an idea where the drugs may have gone to in the Merseyside area, and we've got a, uh, a warrant in our possession. We're all going to descend on the address and uh, execute the warrant. It's a tense drive in convoy to Liverpool. Apprehensive, don't know what we're going into. Um, yeah, yeah, a whole number of things could happen. But they arrive in numbers. And packing serious hardware. Coppers from two forces have waited eight hours for this bust. They're not hanging around. Locked. Cue Tom and the big red key. Nine coppers go through the door, 
literally. You got him here? No, no. They lock the house down in a heartbeat. Still. But no one's home. I'm clear. Can you go? It? While Tom resumes hostilities with the door. The team leaves no stone unturned. There's something under the floor because it's it's yeah. incredibly loose. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hole or something. On the stairs he's got a cricket bat and a and a knife which he may use for protection. A nine-inch blade. But they came for drugs. No, nothing. The question is, are they too late? We've got the big black hydroponics tent. And if you have a look in there, it's, this has either been an old grow that's been cleared out, so whatever was in there has been harvested and sold on. Then next door. Bingo. We've got some new seedlings in this one. This being grown here. There's clearly been a, a harvest next door, so it's a, a, quite a professional cannabis grow. For something like this, you, you're talking tens of thousands of pounds. It's a good find, but it's not the Class A's that they were after. This, on the other hand... This big bag of white powder was found on a ledge where the fridge is. This is what, what we've been looking for all evening, so, yeah, it's a good result, we found it. This bag contains dozens of smaller bags of powder that they think is cocaine. It's a massive haul. Is it what, what's the dart there, is it? It's, it's is that just heroin. differently packaged, is it? It's heroin as well. Got some They're brown as wraps, well. Aren't they? Yeah. Wraps. But it's just the start. Right, this uh, package here has got a lot of red pills in it, so that's going to be an MDMA type substance, uh, ecstasy. Uh, and you've also got peachy coloured bags here where we've got cocaine, uh, and then you've also got a, a darker substance, and so possibly we're looking at heroin with that as well. So, yeah, good job. A bumper haul is off the street. Now it's just a matter of nicking someone for it. We know who lives here, so uh, we've invited him for a little chat, I think, at some point. Uh, we've uh, recovered what we've uh, set out to do today, so yeah, good little result. Off home now, hopefully. During the raid, interceptors seized high purity cocaine, ecstasy, crack cocaine, and cannabis. Class A and B drugs with an estimated street value of £150,000. Over 20 people have been charged in relation to the raid at the Merseyside House. They await trial, but the maximum penalty for supplying Class A drugs is life imprisonment. Still to come. Oh, it's your brother. He's my brother. Tall tales on the M62. So why didn't you know his name? Jim Hunt goes all WWE. Unfortunately, when I took him down the ground, he landed on top of me, which is not ideal, really. And reports of a knife crime are just what Team Taser ordered. We are all Taser. If you've got no Taser, we're happy to go. Yes, please. Right, let's go. When interceptors hit the road, they know the whole team has their back. PC Jim Hunt, he stopped a car over in All Sage. Yeah. Um, he shouted up on the radio, requested assistance on a grade one. He's got the driver with him, he's not compliant. It obviously sounds like he's kicking off a bit, so we'll get to him and see what help he needs. It's mid-afternoon, and Rich Woodward is answering an urgent shout from fellow interceptor Jim Hunt, who's struggling with a suspected car thief. A little bit concerning that he wants further patrols immediately. It's always a worry when a copper radios for assistance. So the interceptor gets his size nine down. Rich is an advanced driver. He's also packing 50,000 volts, and it sounds like he may need that taser today. It's still sounding pretty urgent, yeah. The aggressive driver has been stopped in a cul-de-sac, okay. but finding it is proving a nightmare. Okay. 
there they are. Rich arrives on scene to find Jim wrestling with his suspect. Cavalry time. Jim, got teaser. Right. Don't move, you've got teaser on your red top. Get your arms out. Get your arms out now. He won't play ball. I'm getting back. And he's in danger of getting tasered. Arms out now. Arms out. The arms are out. To your side. Any more, Jim? No. At last, the cuffs are on, which just leaves the formalities. I mean, right. I was just putting my hands on Like you. I said, mate, you're under arrest. All right, Jim, yeah? Get, get up. Get that camera up. Get up. Get Shut camera. up. Stand up. Jim's had an epic struggle with this driver. Hey, mate, you've put, put that camera away from me. <coughs> and as the suspect is led to the unmarked beamer, it's fair to say PC Hunt needs to catch his breath. Another day at the office. Jim's won numerous police commendations, but he may well cop a bit of police banter for this incident. Yeah. Well, as I came down the street, I could see him really wrestling with you, more or less on top of you. It wasn't ideal. Well, uh, so I need to find out who he is and search the car mate, and see what it is. OK, I'll get the car sorted. <coughs> You been gas or anything? No. Oh, right. no. Just wrestling. He's got a chest infection, that's all, mate. I'll just, I'll just get a road name. Under the circumstances... What's your name, fella? All right. Uh, listen, shut up, mate. You're in the pub. I won't... What's your name? All right, we're tough, then. Jim's in no mood to mess about. <laughs> Looking for drug activity and drug dealing, and this car come out of a quite aptly named road called Shady Grove. He took off. As soon as he saw me, took the first immediate left, just to get out of the way. He's come to a dead end. So I've pulled behind him. <coughs> I got out of the car and you could see he's very, very nervous, very wired, kept on reaching into his pockets. And I got this distinct impression there's something not right. They ended up me having a tussle on the floor with him. And what a tussle it was. Obviously he's probably about half my age, with none of this gear on. I'm probably in a little bit of better condition than I am. Unfortunately, when I took him down on the ground, he landed on top of me, which is not ideal really. The driver refuses to give his details. But Jim's confident he doesn't own the vehicle. It's a crowbar found in the back of the car. Interesting to see what he's using that for, really. And after a quick search... We've got a uh, cannabis grinder with uh, some tobacco in it. He's pretty certain that no-one owns it. So it just looks like a stereotypical pool car. It's um, people running to the ground, using it for criminal activities. Nothing either from your trousers, is there? down with you know, you can't do that move. Not looking at anything. Not that way inclined. Where do you think people put drugs? They don't put them in the pockets, do they? No drugs are found in the car or on the suspect. But that doesn't mean he hasn't got any drugs in him. Do you want to give me a sample of saliva? Wow, well, was this good? So if you've got any cocaine or cannabis in the bit, random. Do that, well, I do, mate. There's also the little matter of who he is. Nice. Just give it your finger, mate. Just for the fingerprint device. Check your ID. After the three-man pampering with the latest police kit, a clearer picture emerges. The mobile fingerprint device is always handy when people don't want to give the details. It's come back with a positive match. Obviously, he's sure been arrested before and been convicted of offences before. That's why his fingers have been kept on the police national computer. He's already known for several crimes, and he's about to be known for another. He's over on the drug wipe for um, cannabis and cocaine. So um, we, at least we've got something uh, substantive to uh, take him into custody for. So uh, we're taking his vehicle off him. He's locked up for drug driving. And uh, I think it just sends a bit of a, a message out to the community, really, that um, we're there trying to uh, tackle the drug problem around here. After racing to the rescue, it falls to Rich to make the long walk to the suspect's blue light taxi. Let's jump up there, buddy. Next stop, Middlewich Nick. The driver was arrested for drug driving, no insurance, driving on a provisional license, and thanks to his WWE smackdown with Jim, resisting arrest. He awaits his day in court. Considering to start with it was just a case of uh, having no license and no insurance, it was a bit of an extreme reaction to end up uh, rolling around fighting with a bobby on the floor. Whether they're being wrestled to the ground or chased on the roads, most lawbreakers have one thing in common. They're not big on telling the truth. 
You're not driving to an MOT testing station now. You're not. You're not. Some would put Pinocchio to shame. Your nose is growing like Pinocchio, mate. Interceptors shovel more bull than most farmhands. And they've evolved into human lie detectors. We we'll probably get lied to daily. You just you get used to the little signs, the little gut instincts, little mistakes, things that trip people up. It's lunchtime on the M62. As vehicles pass an ANPR camera, one car causes confusion. A Land Rover. This has come back as a Lexus. The control room is showing that it's on a black Land Rover. However, the intel that we have, that it was on a, a Lexus IS220. So it'll be interesting just to see if it is a Lexus or it is a Land Rover. There may be a straightforward explanation for a Lexus being on the system as a Land Rover, but Keith Parsons and Ian Blanchard want to be sure. Yeah, there it is. It's on a blue Lexus as well. Hotel Tango 3-1. 3 go ahead. Yeah, that vehicle's just passed us on a, a Lexus. Keith used to be a house DJ, but the only tune he bangs out these days is the old interceptor horn section. A roar from the marked X5, and the Lexus looms into view half a mile ahead. There it is, just going past that HGV in the distance with the tail lift. Alongside Keith today, Ian Blanchard. Blanchy used to drive a Yugo, dubbed the worst car in history. A far cry from a chauffeur-driven X5. But this beast of a Beamer isn't built for cutting through busy traffic. I'm just trying to play catch up now and see where it's gone. I think it's the one in front of us now. They flag down the Lexus, and its driver pulls in good as gold. Hotel Tango 3-1, vehicle starts at 32 over zero. 32 over zero. Well, I'm two sets. Time for a quick one-to-one -one with the driver. Hi, you all right? Is this your car? Yeah. It's showing through that it should be on a Land Rover. Can you step out and come and join us for a minute, please? Just come this side for me. Just take a seat in the rear of the passenger side, please. Over to you, Keith. All right, mate. Is it your car? Yeah. How long you had it? It's a year, I think. Have you got insurance on it? It's got more battery insurance on it. It should be a Range Rover there. Yeah. That, that's coming back as a Range Rover. No, the Range Rover's in the garage. Are you driving licence on you? Uh, check no, okay. What's your name? Yeah. Jahir is my first name. J-A-H-E-R, that's your first name? Yeah. Your date of birth, right? 1990. So he's 26. Okay. A quick check on the Lexus. Can you just confirm the last five of the VIN, please? Yeah, I've got the last five. 811145. Satisfies them that the number plate issue is an insurance mix-up. But there's another mix-up with the 26-year-old driver. How old are you? Me. And this one's not so innocent. How old are you? 24. Are you sure? Yeah. Born in 1990. 1990. You're 26 then, aren't you? You're 24. How can you be? If you're born in 1990, with the details you're giving me, you'd be 26. I'll see if anyone's got a lantern, mate. 1990 would make you 26. Those years just fly by. I know exactly how old I am. Are you giving the right details? I am, honestly, I am. It's just, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just nervous. You know, I need to go back to Manchester. You know, that's, that's the only reason. A statement that could only be less believable if it was delivered by a unicorn. You got anything for me name on it at home? Have you got a wallet in your pocket? You got any tattoos? Got tash on me, to be honest with you. Have you got Facebook on your phone? <laughs> you don't have Facebook on your phone? No, a 26, 24 year old with no Facebook. Either he's a deep cover spy or he's lying. Have you got Twitter or anything? The lad says his name is Jahir. Luckily, Cheshire is one of the first forces to carry tablets linked to the police database, and they have access to Jahir's picture. That's not you. That's me. Let's have a look. Mm. 
No chance. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's debatable. It's got fatter cheeks on there. His story is unravelling like a cheap rug. It's beautiful. Not about that. And it's time to tug the thread. That image in there shows a different bone structure to your face. That's what I'm seeing on there. So whether you just lost a bit of weight, I don't know, but just uh, chat with the passenger. Can you just confirm the driver's name for me? Sorry? Sorry, I can't hear with this traffic. Do you know how old he is? Is he? Thank you. The passenger confirms the driver is Jahir, but the interceptors aren't convinced. I know you said you're nervous, however, you should still be able to remember your age. It's not the most difficult question in the world, is it? They think he looks more like his brother, Javed. That's Javed. He doesn't write. But he's a dead ringer for you. You do look at similar. Alright, we've got somebody coming up with a mobile fingerprint device, okay. So it's just funny that Javed, who looks very much like you, is 24, which is the age that you just gave me. So if you're Javed and you've got no licence or anything, now's the time to say it. Because the fingerprint device will tell me. So this is your last chance to be honest before you get locked up for a number of offences, in, including obstructing police. So which would you like to go with? Is it Jahir or Jav? I'm not Jav. Right. So who are you? Razon. Right, OK. Or brother number three, Razon. So why have you given me false details? Do you have a driving licence? I've got a driving licence, yeah. Who looks like Jav, claimed to be Jahir, and isn't insured. Leaving just one loose end to attend to. Uh, do you understand the, uh, it's an offence to obstruct police in the course of the duty? You don't. You just lied to me, so why are you giving us false details for your driver? You just told us who he is. Simple question. I thought he's your brother. He's my brother. So why don't you know his name? He's my brother. So I, I, why do you, why don't you know his name then? Because they have five brothers. So you don't know which brother it is? Ah, the old five brother defence. Classic. The next time a police officer asks for uh, somebody's name, don't be obstructive. All right, you find yourself arrested. The vehicle's being seized from where it is because you're driving without insurance. Okay. So I think you're going to have to make a phone call for somebody to come and collect you. <laughs> Hey, your sister's great. She still doesn't know who you are, <laughs> even though you're a brother. Brother number three was charged with driving without insurance and without a license. He's been summoned to court, where he will be expected to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I like it when they lie to me, it's fun. Because <laughs> when you know they're talking, utter. Still to come. Because you don't take those along as a tickling stick, do you? Night of the Long Knives. Basically, we got into a tussle and he was on the floor, I was on top of him, he stabbed me. Keeping the peace. Wind it in and go home, OK? And picking the lock. In most UK towns, the wee hours of Saturday morning are rarely a picnic. Most revellers just want a good night out. But not everyone. Hey, wind it in and go home, OK? Cheshire interceptors are determined a few bad apples don't ruin the barrel. And their not-so-secret weapon is affectionately known as the Big Blue Van. We've had a report that there's a group who uh, are getting a bit rowdy and they've asked for police presence. So we're in the big blue van and we'll show a bit of police presence. Oh, for Oscar 16, show us T8. Move. Go on, move. move. Taxi. Not from here, eh? No, we've been waiting for a taxi. We're waiting for the cab. Honestly, we're waiting for the cab. We're trying to go home. Go on. We'll go home then. The van works closely with local bars and clubs to keep the peace, and it's just had a call for aid from a nearby nightclub. The reveller in the polo neck has been thrown out of the club and is trying to get back to his mates. The bouncers have called in the interceptors, 
to move him safely on his way. What does your friend look like? What's he wearing? They'll go and get your friend to come out and see you. You're not going back in. He's getting worked up. And that's black fella started saying... Right, oh, yeah, that's enough now, right? isn't it, mate? Are you, are you going? Is he going with you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Is he? Ask well, him. ask him now. The man has been accused of trying to start a fight. Apparently I wanted to fight that black fella in the toilets, but I never... You know, he's throwing a race card and all that. Oh, and all these are all, all these are going, oh yeah, oh yeah, Sam, because he said it. Hey fella, 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 less of the F words now, I've had enough of it. I'm not here to listen to people who are drunk, who can't speak reasonably. Have I swore at you? Have these swore at you? So don't swear. Interceptors are trained to calm these situations down. This is Sam's mate. I'm talking, <laughs> and you've just shouted him, and he's not interested. Yeah. Right, stay in there. And in minutes, they persuaded the lad to do the sensible thing and head home. Handbags at ten places. Diffusing handbags is meat and drink to these guys, but they're more than ready when things occasionally escalate. So there's been an assault up here. Lads lying on the ground unconscious. Bobby's with him. Three have legged it down Watergate Street. It's now 4am and the van is hunting a man and woman allegedly involved in an assault. There's a lad running down there hang on, on the left-hand side. Hang on, hang on, here we go, here we go. That's them. That? That's him. Alfred Roscoe 1 6, possible site in Walls Avenue. Oh, correction, it's not, he's got a white shirt on. White shirt, red herring. Nearly, nearly. It's definitely a black shirt. But they'll have to lead Mr. Black Shirt to local units. Is that all? How far away is that, Nick? An urgent shout has come over the radio about a man chasing someone with a dangerous weapon. Oh, Frosco 1 6, have you got sufficient taser for that job? The van isn't just a deterrent, it's crewed by elite interceptors trained in far more than public order. We are all taser. If you've got no taser, we're happy to go. Yes, please. Right, let's go. Toe down, blues and twos, and they're away. We've got a report of a male being chased by another male. A little bit of conflict and story whether the other male's got a mallet or a cleaver. Mallets and cleavers have one thing in common. Both spell bad news. But on the radio, we've got local patrols going single staff with no taser capability. We've got a van with four taser staff on board. It seems silly not to swim, go and provide taser capability in case the male does have a cleaver or a, or a mallet. The van isn't built for speed. Luckily, the incident happened just a few miles away. They arrived to find local coppers interviewing the man allegedly chased with the weapon. Now, how did you get there initially? I got a taxi here. Right. With him? Or no, myself. Can you point out the address? Yeah. On the corner. Right. They head for the home of the suspect. And when they radio in his details, it seems he's wanted for failing to appear in court on a charge of assault. He's only wanted for a common assault. What's this job he's done? Chased him with an, with an axe? Yeah. Or a mission as well? Threats to kill. Interceptors take this sort of thing in their stride. Threats to kill, that'll do. The alleged victim leads them to the rear of the suspect's property. Whereabouts? And points out the entrance. Which door? The team moves into position. Taser's drawn. Does this come out of the front anyway, mate? With a potentially armed man inside, everyone is on edge. No answer. Reports of a meat cleaver and threats to kill are grounds to take the door down. But then... What's your name, mate? Facing four tasers... Come here. Mate, will you not stop? There, come here. Show your hands, buddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The suspect wisely gives himself up. Mate, What's listen. Fine? Show us your hands. Show us your hands. Keep us there, mate. All right? It's fine. How you doing, boys? Not too bad. He's straight in the bracelets but not happy about it. Undo the 
Yeah, just under it. 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 Going into the back of the van, being arrested in suspicion of a fray, possessing an offensive weapon. So that's where we're at at the moment, really. We've got the witness, and we'll just search around the property, see if we can find the um, the offending weapons. Well, um, when they search the property, it doesn't take long to discover a dangerous blade. Found the knife under the settee side, but I don't know what kind of. Uh... You said it was a great big thing. It is an offensive weapon. But it's not a mallet or a meat cleaver. Meat cleaver. Nor are the three blades stashed in the bathroom. I mean, that's not a meat cleaver by any mm. chance. Where was that at? This is down by the side of the settee. Is the witness still outside? I don't know. He's obviously sashing weapons all over the place, isn't he? About four or five knives have been found in, in odd locations, which you wouldn't normally store knives in, like down the side of the settee or in the bathroom. But the witness is, uh, is claiming that it's quite a distinctive knife, which these don't really fit the description. Um, irrespective of that, um, the knife's in a location which, if we have to come here again, it wouldn't be nice to be faced um, with, with knives like that so close to hand, because uh, something like that would do some serious damage to you, even with a stab vest on. It's not a nice thing to be confronted with. And it's not something you generally bring to the toilet with you. Because you don't take those along as a tickling stick, do you? Um, they're only meant for one reason, and that's just to cause some serious damage. They double-checked the knives found so far with the lad who reported the alleged attack. It looked bigger than that, if I'm honest. It's bigger than that? It looked bigger than that. Looking behind, I seen a big shiny thing, but it did look bigger than that. These are all stashed in a toiletry bag in the bathroom. The hunt for the big shiny thing continues. I think he's dropped it somewhere. Aided by the tracking skills of the dog unit, much to the dismay of the locals. The weapon reported by the witness was never found, and no further action was taken over the alleged Cleaver incident. He later appeared in court and was acquitted of the unrelated assault charge. Knife crime in the UK was up 11% last year, a worrying stat that the interceptors are keen to keep under control. It's early doors in Middlewich, and PC John Dixon has been stopped by an anxious member of the public. This lad, he's been stabbed by somebody, so oh I've put all the debris stripped over it at the moment. He's quite Hotel deep. Tango 78BA. Yeah, what are you looking for? Yeah, I've just been flagged down. I haven't got any further details at the moment, but um, male saying that he's been uh, stabbed in the arm. Can I have an ambulance, please, to Wheelock Street? Born and bred in this neck of the woods, Dicko's determined that the UK's growing knife crime problems keep out of Cheshire. The victim is bleeding, but mercifully, his injuries are restricted to his arms. What occurred? Three girls confronted uh, a girl on her own. I didn't think it was right that three girls had started to have a go at one girl on her own, so I stepped in and just said, look, it's not right. Having rescued a damsel in distress, the knight in shining armour says he then caught the attention of an onlooker out to cause trouble. Basically, we got into a tussle, and as he was on the floor, I was on top of him, he stabbed me at some point. Yeah. I couldn't tell you which one was first, whether it was the right arm or the left arm, but he's got me at some point. After wrestling an armed man, he's lucky his injuries aren't far worse. Even so, Dicko's keen for the lad to get medical attention. So they're just getting the ambulance here to check him out and probably take him uh, to hospital. And finally, paramedics arrive at the scene. The wounds to the top left of the arm and the right arm would suggest that a knife was used. Fortunately, they're more superficial, not too deep. Possibly one may need stitches. Right, this is going to make me sound really daft, but just stitches hurt. Local units are hunting for the suspect, 
but with Larry spectators starting to stick their beaks in. Who's been stopped? Dicko remains on scene. You haven't even been in here, Daniel, so go away. Oh, Daniel, everything look at sorted. Me. Which proves a touch. Because the local lad come copper went to school with the noisiest one. Daniel. We're at Park Road. Daniel, look at An me. An infant. Look at me. Miss Fardy and all that. Daniel. Yeah? yeah? Is it? Go home. Johnny Dixon. Daniel, go home. <laughs> go home. See? The interceptor's presence keeps any early morning handbags in check. But the rare knife crimes are more of a worry. <laughs> Certainly in this day and age, knives are more prevalent, but generally in my time uh, as a serving police officer in Cheshire. It's something that we come across not too often, fortunately. However, when we do come across it, we need to protect the public. We need to make sure that the injuries sustained by the victim are treated, and if we do apprehend offenders, we as police officers need to be switched on. Knife crime is obviously something that we take very seriously. There wasn't enough evidence to prosecute anyone for the Wheelock Street stabbing. But between the presence of the big blue van rapid response taser units and marked cars on the streets, Cheshire interceptors are doing everything possible to keep violent crime off their patch. Still to come. Why have we got different plates on it now? A dodgy driver with a lot on his plates. If you don't start talking to me, boys, you're both going to get locked up. And a routine job takes a worrying turn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just put it down. Oh, what, what is it you've got there? It's late morning. Dad Halliwell and Gordon Morris are starting their shift and ready for anything. Yeah, we're like spring coils or spring rolls. <laughs> we've, just had the, we've, <laughs> we've just had the weekend off, so we're raring to go. Gordy likes locking up burglars and drug dealers. But today's first job is to find a man who's more of a danger to himself. We're off to an address to assist social services with the mental health patients. He was uh, arrested last week under the Mental Health Act. Unfortunately, he escaped the following morning. Uh, he's since been arrested and he's since escaped again. I believe he has assaulted police officers in the past. Let's see if we get a reply. Uh, if not, if social services can confirm that he's in there, we'll force entry to the address. It's a delicate situation but they're taking no chances. Suited and booted, they join local police and social services and approach the property. Oh, he's in, just seen him. Okay. okay. Just press the others, he won't, he won't buzz it in. Suddenly, he's at the window, pointing something at the cops. What do you want, right. Ryan Constant? Whoa, 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 just put it down. What? what is it you've got there? Yeah. The man has shot them. I thought he had a starting pistol or something. With a camcorder. Hey, it's the police, mate. You buzz us in. I beg the door in. You. Are you going to open the door for us? No, I'm not. OK, just don't stand behind the door then when we come through. A resident has buzzed them into the main building, but the man has vowed not to let them into his flat. Since when did they do camcorders like a little gun? <laughs> Better go and get a nappy on. Just give him a knock for us, mate. And I forward everything digitally, lightweight. The ranting from inside suggests he's not going to open up for a polite knock knock. Okay, Dan, step back. Just step back for us because of the, the glass. Time for a less mannered approach. Straight inside, they instantly move to keep the man calm. What? Calm down, calm down. I'm not upset. OK, all right, I get that. Just calm down. The operation goes off without a hitch. Don't speak, just breathe. Just calm your breathing down. And the patient is soon en route to hospital to receive the help he needs. While his loaded camcorder is safely locked away. Initially, from that sort of distance looking up, all I can see is a silver rim and a black sort of hole, which obviously which transpired to be the, the lens, but I think initially I thought it was like a starting pistol gun. 
and then as we moved back, saw it on a different angle, saw it was Cameron, and was happy at that point. But I think initially it uh, things moved, shall we say? <laughs> Stand we sock. <laughs> It's not unusual for interceptors to assist social services during daylight hours. But as darkness rolls in, Dan and Gordy have bigger fish to fry. They're blue lighting to intercept a car that's fled a petrol station without paying. A car that may not be what it seems. I've had an AMP office a couple of miles away on a white BMW. I um, believe it's on false plates, so it should relate to a black Peugeot. And it's been responsible for a drive off uh, in North Wales. As they close in, Dan kills the blues to play Hunt the Beamer. Where are we looking? White right, Beamer, one there, but. No, that's not it. Dan may struggle to distinguish a gun from a camera in bright sunlight, but there's nothing wrong with his night vision. Where does he be? That is there on the left. Right. Motorway coppers have beaten them to it. Driver and passenger have already swapped their tasty BMW X6 for the back of a squad car. Hey mate. Hello, mate. Whose car is it? Mine. This registration number that we believe has been involved in some drive-offs, filling up, whatnot. It could be on, and I believe it could be on stolen plates. The men deny using fake plates. Good luck with that. What's the registration number of it? L400 Moss. Well, that is what was hiding underneath. So, why have you got different plates on it now? Well, I haven't put them on it. You have? I haven't put the plate on it. Why would I want to put the plate on it? To rob Diesel from a garage, perhaps. If you don't start no. talking to me, boys, you're both going to get locked up. I'm going to get locked up anyway. Yeah. Talk to me then. The number plate hidden underneath is actually legit and the car is registered to the passenger in the blue top. This registration here does come back to the correct vehicle and it comes back to the gentleman that we've got. However, he's using plates that are down as stolen from the Buckley area in North Wales. So he's obviously using these plates, putting on top of these ones and then obviously committing the, um, the drive-off offences. Obviously filling up something this big isn't going to be cheap, so he's getting a full tank and getting away with it, or until now. Quite common as well, a lot of people do, um, do uh, drive-offs. I mean, to, to have the... The balls to put a different plate on is, is going that one step further. Shame they didn't have the brains to take it off afterwards. I mean, at the end of the day, if you can't afford to run a car like this, don't drive it. You know, you don't then go and commit crimes to fund the joys of driving them. Both driver and passenger have a date with Chester Nick. So it's three, two, one, all together now. You're under arrest for theft of uh, number plates and also uh, fraud by deception. You don't have to say anything, may only defence. Do not mention when questioned, something which you later be lying in court, anything you do say may be given an evidence. Say if it may on defence, do not mention when questioned, something they try in court, if you do say may be given evidence, understand? And the gold medal in synchronised nicking goes to Dan and Gordy. Right, we seized your vehicle as well, mate, OK? Well, it's used in crime, eh? Go, don't get it back. Not for the foreseeable future, no. Understandably, Mr Bluetop is worried about when he'll see his £30,000 motor again. We need to do some digging on this vehicle first, how many times it's had false number plates on it. Right, because as far as I'm concerned, you're probably doing this quite a lot, aren't you? No. No? Right, first time. If they think it's been used in crime, the courts have the right to seize a car indefinitely. Because they can't get round by the car. That's not my issue, mate, is it? I know that, I know what I've done, I'm just asking you to... Just, I... I'm saying, I don't know, it's going to be down to the courts, mate. Right, maybe that they'll put a forfeiture on it, because you... Cause you Take it off you. You're joking, are you? No. 30 grand? False number. If you're taking number plates, putting false number plates on it, filling it up and doing one, then you can't be allowed to do that, can you? No. Right, we've just got to get some transport for you. But it might be a bit of a step down from the X6. Can we get a, a van, please? Uh, get can we convey these? Yeah. And you might not like the destination. Where do we go now? Chester Custody, mate. Yeah, said you wouldn't like it. Open the back, mate. No further action was taken against the driver of the X6. The man in the blue top who owned the car was convicted of fraud and theft of number plates. He was sentenced to 80 hours community service and fined a total of £170. He eventually got his wheels back.
The Miranda Hart Story profiles the new queen of British comedy, brand new and next on Channel 5. It's movie time on Five Star, as Denzel Washington and Chloe Grace Moritz star in The Equaliser. And you'd be wise to stay off the roads because it's Car Crash TV causing carnage next over on Spike. In pursuit, vehicle failed to stop and out in force. <laughs> this is Police Interceptors. Stay there as you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime fighting units. Stay there! Please protect us! We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, left, left onto the 534. On the hunt with their dog units. All right, mate, all right, mate. Ringside as they go toe to toe with the bad guys. Get off your legs! Put your hand behind your back! Police are behind everything! Buckle up. Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Get your hands up now! Another day at the office. Coming up. A raid on a suspected drug den. If that was pulled on you, you would think twice about it. A T-Pack takedown. Get off the car. Get off the car. Get off the car. It looks like two 9 mil rounds. And a late night discovery. You will come with us into custody, and that's the downside of coming out in Chester with drugs in your pocket, young man. Last year, there were more than 300,000 assaults on police officers involving deadly weapons. Occupants out, attacking the police vehicle, window smashed. This isn't just because criminals are getting more violent, it's also down to the fact that it's easier to get hold of dangerous items than it used to be. I think just the access to any weapons has you know, got worse over the time. You can order a taser off the internet, from, you know, get delivered from America, work its way through customs, and, and people got these, they carry them on the streets openly. You know, when I first started the policing, you had to know people who knew somebody who knew somebody to get that sort of stuff, but now you can just order it off the internet. It's early evening, and interceptors Mike Jenno Jennings and Jim Hunt are out in the unmarked crime car. What is the make and model of the vehicle ever? White, style van. White, van. Roger, Middlewood Street, will do. As specialists in tactical takedowns, they've been brought in to help stop a van driven by a man suspected of carrying a gun. We're going to exercise our powers of stop and search initially because we suspect or we believe that they've got criminal property in that vehicle. That's as much as we know at the moment. As a former army tank driver, Jim knows all about dangerous weapons. Unlike his partner tonight, Jeno, whose biggest worry as a supermarket manager was an out-of-date yoghurt. Tonight, their main concern is the white van. It's being tracked by another interceptor who's directing them to its location. It's a game of chess, really. It sounds like the vehicle's stationary. Whether it's attended or unattended at the moment, we don't know. We're going to um, get to the general area where we're in good striking distance and, uh, and wait for further direction, really. Minutes later, they get a call that the suspect has got into the van and driven off. Do you want the blues on, mate, or no? It's time to strike. Andy, we're sticking the blues on, mate, to make a bit of progress. Well, the vehicle's on the move. It's heading a little bit away from us um, in a place called Sydney Road. Another crime car has pulled in behind Jim and Jeno, and en route they meet up with fellow interceptor Chris Bucko Buckley. Now they have three cars in convoy, they're ready to carry out a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC. Where a trio of police vehicles blocking a car from the front, rear, and side. First, they have to get to the van. So we're just playing a bit of catch up, really, and then um, hopefully, when they call the strike in, would be close enough to uh, to respond, really. But there's a problem. Well, 
heading back towards crew. Dive off here. The van is heading right towards them, okay. and as the plan is to get behind it to carry out the T-Pack, if the driver spots the cop cars, it could jeopardise the whole operation. Yeah, whereabouts are you at the moment? Um, we're on Ace Avenue, just gone into the estate, so we're not going to um, show out ever. We're currently crew road towards the town centre. Yeah, yeah, we know where you are. Um. Jim and his colleagues on the strike team will have to stay out of sight for the moment. We're all trying to scramble out the way, really, and um, stay as covert as possible. Um, so the last thing we want to do is to spook the driver and for him to have it on his toes into the town centre, or potentially as well, um, lose the evidence in the vehicle. If you can start closing it towards Ben, please. Towards Ben, Roger. Ten minutes later, and the job's back on. Lights on. Is it going towards Middlewich or towards Nantwich, over? Yeah, the vehicle is currently Middlewich towards Lake Hospital. Roger. We're just going past the Grand Junction. We're a little bit far away, but um, the Geno's driving. We should be there um, in no time at all. As soon as we go 5.30, I'll turn the sirens off. So the other cars will come from behind us, um, hopefully. Um, Bucko in the marked car will be the little yeah. vehicle, and the, uh, the other one marked will go to the side. Geno's blue light driving soon gets them close to the suspect van, perhaps too close, as the undercover car behind the van has seen their blues. Kill him. Kill him. Yep, we are all uh, lights off now. Up ahead, the van keeps at the same speed. It seems the driver hasn't noticed Geno's lights, although Geno has spotted him. There it is. Up is ahead. It? Up ahead. There's the van, just going under the bridge. That's got to be it, hasn't it? All three T-Pack cars need to get directly behind the van before making their move. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, keep us updated then. Um... Yeah, yeah. And there's a few cars to get past first. And that one. Which they'll have to do without attracting the van driver's attention. I can see it. Yeah, we've got eyeball on that. Vehicle towards Winston, Roger. Back up, Finally, they're all behind the van. Lads, um, obviously we're going to come up to the, uh, the lit section here. If you're in agreement, that's probably going to be the best place to do it. Roger, next straight section if we can, Roger. Everyone's in position. But will the van driver fall into their trap? Interceptors Jim Hunt and Mike Jennings are part of a three-car T-Pack team brought in to stop a man suspected of carrying a gun. What is the make and model of the vehicle ever? Small white paddy style white van. White van. After some tricky manoeuvres around the streets of Crewe, all three cars are in position. The trap has been set. It's time to T-Pack. Right, guys, move up, move up, move up. The marked car gets in front of the van. An unmarked car gets alongside it, while Geno blocks it in at the rear. It's got nowhere to go. You got him. You got him. The driver is immediately cuffed as he's believed to be carrying a gun, and they give him a thorough search. Keep his face up. Go towards you. Turn your face the way, mate. But they don't find anything on him. The same can't be said of the van, though. Looks like two 9mm rounds in cellophane on the passenger seat, we see. There are two bullets on the passenger seat, and that's not all. There's a big carving knife under the driver's seat. Unless the driver's a chef, that's a deadly weapon. Look, two rounds at the moment. They appear to be live. So we'll leave those in situ for the moment. We've still got a more detailed search to carry on at the moment, so uh, it's a good result. Along with the knife and the bullets, We'll take a seat in our car. Jim's found something he suspects might also be a weapon. I've tried to see if it's a taser, but I can't see if it's... Um... That, that's a normal torch. Is there anything else in the vehicle? I promise you there's nothing else in the vehicle. What is in the vehicle? What? Nothing. 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 This is a torch. Um, it says a defender. 
Um, I've had actually a taser disguised in a, uh, a so-called Defender torch before. Two metal probes across there and you get them disguised as mobile phones. Any inconspicuous object really. But on close inspection it doesn't appear to be a taser. But uh, what I'll do, I'll just try on my colleague here. I'll put the torch on. Yeah, and the if he, one. If he collapses in a ball of uh, a ball of snot on the floor, then we obviously find a taser, don't we? Whether or not the torch is a deadly weapon, the knife and the bullets are enough to see the van driver arrested. A good nick after a textbook tea pack. It was all right. We we got it stopped. There was an element of surprise. He literally did an emergency stop, which. Tactical contact, well, lucky I did, we didn't crash into the back of him to be fair. Chest pumps all around. I blew fist pump. <laughs> I'm allergic to later. Quiet. <laughs> the man was arrested for possession of a knife and ammunition. The bullets were confiscated and no further action was taken against the driver. All in all, it's been a good evening for the interceptors, except for one thing. The van's got a flat battery. This is policing at its finest. <laughs> Go on then. It's all in a night's work for Geno. It's Friday morning and interceptors Dan Halliwell and Gordy Morris are part of a team about to simultaneously raid two flats linked to drug activity. In charge of today's operation is Sergeant Danny Haddock. Operation Stella, we're all participating in today. Uh, we're looking to execute two Misuse of Drugs Act warrants at two addresses. First address, that's going to be Team 1, uh, and the second address we're looking at, both very close to each other, 60, 70 yards in between. Gordy and Dan's job today is opening the door of flat number one. Interceptor style with a big red key. So well, let's get them in hard, fast and safe. And once we've got them under control, we can do it at our pace then. Uh, the MOE is going to be Dan and Gordy. We've run a book and I've said one strike. No, no pressure. <laughs> right, anyone else got any questions? Right, everyone enjoy it, be safe. Joking aside, this is serious business and Dan and Gordy know what needs to be done. Our role today is to do the method of entry, to force entry to the premises and initially go in and uh, secure any persons in there. KFC loving Dan's a big fan of the Jason Bourne movies. While Gordy prefers Yippie Ki Yang to Die Hard. And they're expecting to do some action moves today. Give it a good welly with a smile. We'll know on the first hit. So we believe it's a wooden door with a little bit of glass in it. I've got every faith that you'll hit it in one. Though the last time they dealt with a door, it took a lot more than one hit to get it open. Stop it. <laughs> we had to rotate the hitting of the, of the door, really. We caused that much damage. The, the outbuilding was unsafe. But if we've got to get in, we'll get in. But one hit. One it. One it. One it wonder. Getting in quickly is vital as it prevents people in the property from having the time to dispose of any illegal substances they might have. Come on! The interceptors also have to avoid being spotted, but a bunch of cops on a small housing estate stick out like a sore thumb. Both entry teams get into position and ready to go. And then they get the go ahead. Go, go. It's time to move. Gordy's got the big red key. They quickly nick three people. But we're here for a reason. We'll get you dressed safe and then we're going to conduct a search. Gordy's done his job perfectly. It's good. He went in first time. That was the main thing. Three persons on, on the premises, all secured. Didn't have time to get rid of anything. So, yeah, it's good. 
It's what we want, really. <laughs> With the first flat safe and secure, Sergeant Haddock goes to check if there's anything fishy in the other flat that was raided. What have we got there? 70 yards difference. The search is in full swing. And they've already found some drugs, a big bag of cannabis. First seizure under the bed, oh, that's cannabis, so it's a start. Back at the first flat, Gordy and Dan have joined the search team. So it's just a case of now, see, see what we can recover. Um, anything, any fences that come to light, we'll deal with those responsible, whether it's all of them or individually. But first, Gordy has to put his advanced driver skills to the test. There you go, you got your headlights on. You're right. Is it quick? No, no, it's quick, this. I'll do. Yeah, you start that way, we'll work around. The search uncovers a bag of cannabis in one of the bedrooms. Its owner is going to be taking a trip to the cop shop for further questioning. You coming down today, yeah? Yeah. 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 All right. The search team in the second flat has had more success. Back at Northwich Nick, Gordy and Sergeant Haddock go through all their evidence, including one particularly scary find. As you can see what we've got here, this is the, uh, the worrying thing we've recovered. If that was pulled on you, you, uh, you would think twice about it. Don't you, Gordy, but I'd be uh, getting shot in the back, I wouldn't be getting shot in the face. Obviously, there was, there was no intelligence that we had that there was going to be firearms at addresses, but like that, it's a, it's a 177 pellet gun. It's reasons like that that we wear the kit we do when we go into these addresses. We've recovered Class B drugs here. Uh, there's not dealers amounts there, but again, if people are sitting off in the dresses, they will often smoke cannabis. A man from the second flat was later given a cannabis warning, as was the man arrested in the first property. No charges were brought over the BB gun found in flat two. Wait! Wait! No further action was taken against the other people detained in the raids. Even though the number of accidents involving drink drivers on Britain's road has dropped by a third in the last decade, drink drivers still cause more than 200 deaths each year. No wonder it's a crime that makes most interceptors blood boil. I've got no time for drink drivers. Um, if you can afford to get drunk, afford a taxi or walk home. Um, you don't deserve any sympathy whatsoever. The heartache it causes, even for the driver themselves, when they lose a life or they're seriously injured, the effect it has on people, and they just don't think about that. They can't do. I'm uh, happy to take drink drivers off the road all day long, all day long. It's a rainy night in Cheshire, and interceptor Ian Blanchard is single crewed in the traffic car, on the lookout for dodgy drivers. But what he's most worried about right now is the weather. It's a heavy rain, a lot of standing water. Nobody wants to go out when it's like this. I don't want to go out when it's like this, but I'm getting paid for it. Along with being out on patrol in the rain, drink drivers and people using their phones while driving, 10-year veteran Ian also doesn't like sushi. And he soon gets a call about a very fishy-sounding driver. Westbound, sir, at Nicholas, reported all over the place. Hotel Tango 2-8, Warrington Town Centre, we'll start making. Um, there's a call coming in from a member of the public. Vehicles reported all over the place on the motorway. Got out at the junction and he's now urinating against his car. So he's got out to uh, relieve himself. So whether he's had a few drinks and his bladder's got a bit uh, full. So hopefully we'll catch him driving if he is drunk. Drink driving's bad enough, but in conditions like this. The person who called in to report the drunk driver has continued following him and now sounds like he's doing even more to help. Apparently, the informant has tried to block him in. 2-8 received. All right, so the informant's tried to block this uh, driver in. This driver's then took exception, drove over the grass verge and continued driving with his lights off. The informant is driving an orange minibus, easy enough to spot, even in conditions like this. All right, what's this here? The minibus pulls in to let Ian pass. And he stops right in front of the suspect car. Yeah, leave me as well, two, two, eight, the he looks drunk. Hello. 
Yeah. Just come and join me for a minute, please. Sorry. Have you had anything to drink? No, not at all. Thank you. Right. Your words are slurred at the minute. Have you had anything to drink? No, I haven't. All right. Come and uh, take a seat with us for a minute, please. The man's denying he's been boozing. Just take a seat there for me. But Ian doesn't believe a word of it. When was your last drink of alcohol? Uh, uh, it's fairly recently. I apologise. When you say fairly recently, how recent? An hour. About an hour ago. All right, I'm going to ask you for, sir, to provide a sample of breath for analysis, OK? Sorry? Pay attention to what I'm saying, please. Yes, sir. OK, can you look at me? Thank you. Make a tight seal around this part of the tube with your lips. Keep blowing until I ask you to stop, OK? And blow. This blow doesn't seem to know if he's blow. coming or going. Blow. Blow. No, you're sucking. Blow. Keep going. Keep going. No, listen. Sorry. Right. You're not doing it. No, no, sorry. OK? My, my it is an offensive fail to provide. Take a deep breath and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep... That's good, thank you. Second time around, he manages to blow rather than suck, and it's a shocking result. OK, you provide a reading of 125. OK, the legal limit's 35. You're under arrest for drink driving. He's three and a half times over the limit, but he doesn't seem too bothered. Did, I hurt you? Did you hurt you? could have. Did I? That's not the point, is it? I don't... The man's nicked and taken off to custody for a second test. Just put your arms out in front of you like this, yeah, please. No, no, no. Sorry, just relax them. Watch your head getting in. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Chris is a fart. And it's all thanks to minibus driver Leon, who first spotted the car and dialed 999. I was travelling up um, the M56 back towards Chester and I come up against this car. Um, he was travelling really slowly, about 10 miles an hour. I stayed behind and put my hazard lights on and called the police because um, something didn't seem right. Um, while I was on the phone to the police, he was uh, weaving out between the lanes, um, third lane and first lane, doing 10, 30 miles an hour. He switched his lights off. So dangerous on the road. Thanks very much indeed. How has he managed to turn it here? Has he just uh, spun it round, has he? I, I was following him up this road and he tried to turn around and go back the other way and I blocked him in with the bus. Brilliant. So he couldn't get out. Super. And I saw you coming up the street then. Back at the station, the Nick driver still seems worse for wear. You've got them on the wrong feet. Even working out left and right is a bit tricky. Just walk in here and you can take a seat and put it on in there. Apparently the driver's been out celebrating passing his exams. He's unlikely to have as much success with the intoximeter. Right, your lowest reading's 98. The man later pleaded guilty to drink driving. He was disqualified for 24 months and given a fine of £600. Ian's happy to have taken him off the road tonight. And you've got people out driving a car. It's just doesn't bear thinking about what can happen, really. But it's always these people that walk away, and it's the, uh, the good old innocent people that end up suffering with it. So, yeah, I'm glad that uh, the informants give us that information. Stop with him. Yeah, he's off the road. That's the main thing. Coming up, Jim has his hands full. I just stand over there. Uh, I'll stand over there. Yeah, and go anywhere near us, okay, mate? A web of lies. Are these your correct details? No, they're not. They're not? I might look thick. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm not, yeah. And a smash causes chaos on the M56. Yeah, do you want to come for? Every Friday and Saturday, the interceptors park up the patrol cars and head out in the big blue van. All aboard to make sure Cheshire's movers and groovers have a safe and crime-free night out. Get a, a mixture of receptions from the public. A, a lot of people like to see the van. We always get a lot of people approaching us, saying hello, um, lots of selfie requests, uh, and it does. Be, it, I think it reassures people if they're on a night out. But there's uh, the police are there looking after them. It's the early hours, and the blue van is en route to help out some colleagues who've nicked two men spotted on CCTV allegedly taking drugs. Leading the team is Sergeant Johnny Marsden. Uh, we've got another patrol being directed to two lads who look like they've been uh, snorting white powder, most likely the drug choice uh, cocaine. The 
cameraman seen one of them put it in one of the pockets and we've got the two males detained. The two suspect sniffers have been stopped in a shopping precinct in Chester city centre. Johnny and fellow interceptor Jim Hunt are going to help out. And after a stroll through the streets and a quick chat with some party people... Get a good night. <laughs> Sound like my three-year-old kid there. Always asking me for a piggyback. They meet up with their colleagues who've stopped and cuffed two men. There's two males in cuffs already on arrival. Have got any drugs on them? They've both been seen by CCTV uh, passing over white powder. The man in the dark jacket is still to be searched, but his mate in the parker has already had a once-over and as he's clean, he's free to go, though he seems keen to stick around. That way. Can I just speak to these officers? Just just for two seconds. I will, I will. Absolutely. That's absolutely All I want to see is okay. what happens to him. Okay. As soon as I see that, I'll leave. Mate, no, no, you're going now, fella. All right. No, no just give me two on. seconds. No, 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 no go on. No, 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 wait, 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 no, because no, 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 he's got my keys as well. Just, All right, well, we'll get the keys. Just go no, away from the no, officers no, no, while they're doing, no, mate. No, no. Okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going in. Mate. I'm not going in. I just stand over there. I'll stand over there. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. Anywhere near us, okay, mate? While Jim has been dealing with the reluctant lever, Johnny has searched his bouffant buddy and has found something. So what's that? It isn't hair product. I've got no idea. No idea. I've got one five. Somebody's put that in my pocket. So they found what looks like a wrap of cocaine in the lad's back pocket, and Johnny soon discovers something else on the other side. So who's put that in your front pocket then? No idea. I would suggest that's a controlled drug, wouldn't you? Try to use an excuse of somebody else put it in my pocket isn't going to wash, is it? Have you had any drug offences in the past? No. no. Am I going on my way or am I sticking with you guys tonight? You might be, yes. Along with claiming someone's put the powder in his pocket, the lad says he doesn't have any previous for drugs, but Johnny decides to do a quick check just in case. Do me PNC and NIST checks, please, on the male found with a white powder in his pocket. And it's not good news. You got previous possession class B, amphetamine, so you've been stopped for drugs before in the past. So it seems to me that you couldn't lie straight in bed at the moment. You're presenting as if you're drugged. So we've got a duty of care to you now. If I send you off on your way now and something happens, then it's my fault that you're in this state. So the safest thing to do is you will come with us into custody we will look after you and we'll ask you some questions about what's gone on tonight and the items you've been found with. And that's the downside of coming out in Chester with drugs in your pocket, young man. So the lad with the suspicious substances is off to the cells, while his mate is given a dispersal notice, which means he has to leave the town centre straight away. Have a look at that map. Yeah. That's why you're not allowed to go for the next 48 hours. That's fine. Can I, can I just ask something? Well, so obviously, said, like I said, I've not got an address mm -hmm. currently. Marvin lives out of Chester. He's got the house key. He's letting me let me sleep on his couch until I fly out tomorrow. The chap is claiming that he's catching a plane in the morning and his bag is at his mate's place, so he needs to get in to get his stuff. But the cops are going to keep the keys in case they decide to search the suspect's flat. You can go and wait at his address. These officers will book this young man in and then they'll come back to the address with the key and check it. Now I'm homeless for the year. No, you're not. I am. You're homeless for about an hour. An hour. The man with the powder is taken off to the nick, but his mate, despite being told in no uncertain terms that he needs to leave, hasn't quite got the message. You've been served with a dispersal notice. And, 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 come on, come on down the stairs then. Absolutely understand that. I'm just Let's asking. go down the stairs. I'm, mate, please, come on. I, I happily walk down the stairs. Come on then. Let's go. After you. Come on. <laughs> Go, otherwise you're going to get locked up, mate, OK? No, absolutely. You go to the address. I, I'm, I'm literally just trying to confirm what the best way to go about this Well, the best thing for you now is, is a dispersal notice has been served. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're required to leave immediately. Yeah, no. You're going out the town centre that way, along Watergate Street. Do you understand me? Absolutely, Okay. Sir. Go down down to that, that address now, mate. and wait there. Okay. That's all you have to do. But you'll be it's there. as simple as that. Turn no, around, I won't mate. be there. Okay. That officer no, no, will be there no, later. that way. You're going that way, mate, down the Watergate Street. Don't come back into the town centre, fella. Finally, Jim is free of his Parker-clad problem and hopes that'll be the last he'll see of him. One's been locked up for possession of drugs and the other one, obviously, uh, hasn't got any on him. 
but um, it, it may well be that he's um, he's snorting his drugs and uh, and that's the way he, um, that's why he's acting like the way he is. So um, hopefully he'll go home, but we'll see. The man who was arrested later pleaded guilty to possession of cocaine and was fined £155, including costs. No further action was taken against his friend, and we don't know if he managed to catch his flight the next day. While all interceptors love putting in a door, or stinging a suspect car, their bread and butter is stopping dodgy looking motors. And often the most minor issue can turn into something much more significant. And people are moan as well and say, why are you pulling them over for a light out? Surely you've got better things to do. It's always the classic. Why aren't you catching the burglars? Why aren't you catching the robbers? Well, our best jobs come from stuff like that. Minor traffic events. A little light out could be you put your head in the window to talk to them, you can smell alcohol on the breath. Mm. Something so seat small as a seatbelt or a seatbelt yeah. or a light can always turn into something bigger. It's a cloudy Monday afternoon in Cheshire and interceptors Chris Bucko Buckley and Chris Hawkins are parked just off the A34, keeping their eyes peeled for law-breaking drivers. We're just looking for people committing offences that basically will contribute to people being killed or seriously injured in collisions, so like mobile phones, seat belts. Keep our little beady eyes out, open and uh, I think we'll get something, won't we? After 16 years on the job, Bucko knows all the county's best places to spot dodgy motors. But today, his usual banker isn't paying out. I'm starting to think this isn't the best place here. I'm going to move because that light's not very good. Bucko hits the road to find a better place, but immediately spots another illegal and potentially dangerous motor. This, I think it's a signal up here. It looked like it got tinted windows at the front, which, again, are illegal. The Silver Estate appears to have tinted front windows on both sides. If they don't let in enough light, then that's illegal. Sometimes when they're tinted at the back quite heavily, it can make the front ones look tinted when they're not, but we're just going to have a quick chat. Having a tinted rear window is fine, but front windows must let in 70% of light or more to be legit. Hello. Oh, Are you OK? So the reason I stopped you is because your front windows look to be excessively tinted, so I just need to do a quick check of them, that's all. But... Oh, right, yeah. If the windows are too tinted, it's going to cost this driver £60, as long as everything else is in order. So you bought it a week ago? Yeah, about a week ago, mate, yeah. Have you, have you got your insurance to say with you or not? Yeah, by uh, Tommy Traders, mate, on trading policy. It's on the trader's policy, is it? Yeah. All right. Do you want to have a quick seat in the back, then? The driver says he's insured on a motor trader's policy, which allows him to drive any car for business purposes. Bucko runs a few checks. OK, what's your name, mate? Uh, Nathan Hayes. Hayes or Hayes? Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. What's your date of birth, Nathan? Uh, 27th. Yeah. Sets. Yeah. 62. 62. 82, sorry. Eight. Bit of a difference. Yeah, 82, yeah. I was going to say, you're doing well for 62. <laughs> right, what's your home address, Nathan? Cornwall Street. OK, what's the postcode, ST? Uh, ST6. Yep. I don't even know what the postcode is, mate. Right, OK. And you say it's on a trader's policy? Yeah, on a trader's policy, yeah. Right, OK. Who's, whose policy is it? It's on mine. Yours, and what do uh, you do? What do I do? Yes. I'm a mechanic. All right, who's it with then? Uh, obviously, we'll need to just... If you haven't got your insurance with you, you'll have to ring them, you see, to clarify it, that's all. Right, um, I don't even know, mate. You don't know who it's insured with? No. Is it insured? It is insured, mate, yeah. But you don't know who it's insured with? Uh, I did it online. We were a company online. Right. It's all a little bit suspect. The driver doesn't know the name of his insurer or his postcode. And initially, he said he was born in 1962 meaning he's in his 50s. But then, after a moment to reflect, he has a confession to make. I've got no insurance on it, mate. You haven't, have you? No. Right, so why lie to me? I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. I might look thick. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm not, yeah? Sorry, mate, no. Right, well, we're not going to worry about the windows then, are we, at this point, then? Right. Knowing the driver's been lying, Bucko thinks he may have been telling a few more porkies. 
Have you got a full UK driving license? I haven't got a license. Right you haven't got a license either? No. Nope. Have you got a provisional? No. Nope. Are you disqualified as well? I am. Why are you driving? I'm a dick. If you have an accident and you kill someone, you've got no insurance, you've not got a driving license. I know. Oh. Yeah? What a day. Right. You're not wanted for anything, are you? No, I'm not, mate. No. Oh, thank God for that. At least we've got something then, yeah? Yeah. So these are these your correct details? No, they're not. They're not? No. Why have you given me those details then? Was... Should we start again? Yeah, I'll start again, mate. Bucko restarts by getting his real name and address and then has a few more questions while he runs some checks. You're going to see the car, aren't you? Unfortunately, mate. Well, let's, work, let's get all this sorted first, find out who you are. So, oh, yeah. what's your home address? Because I take it that 16 Cromwell is not your home address either. Do you take cannabis or anything like that? I do, mate. I smoke what you got. You do? But I can smell some. When did you last do some? Yeah. This morning. This morning. Right, OK. Just do a quick drug wipe as well on you. Is there anything else? This is not going to be fun, is it? And stick your tongue out. That's it. With the wipe licked, Bucko has eight minutes to find out about any more fibs the driver may have told. But having lied about his name, his age, his address, his insurance and his driving licence, the man has told the truth about one thing. He has smoked cannabis recently. Right, that has indicated cannabis, but if you only had some this morning, it was going to. It was always yeah, going to, wasn't it? So that, The driver's going to the nick and his car's going to the pound. Oh, seized by Cheshire Police. Place get a sticker so that when it gets recovered, everybody can see that uh, we're out there taking vehicles off people that have got no insurance or no driving license. Hopefully, a little bit of a deterrent. There you go. I was just about to say no creases. <laughs> what was quite a minor offence has now turned into something a lot more serious. So, just shows. Got to be in it to win it. Back at the station, the man took another drug test and this time passed so wasn't charged with driving under the influence. However, he was convicted of disqualified driving and driving with no insurance and imprisoned for 182 days. But he's also facing a far bigger punishment than any court could dish out. Obviously, he's got his disqualified driving everything else. He's forgot his missus' birthday today. Oh, I've just said that's the worst offence out of all of these. Yeah. She's going to have your uh, nuts for garters, mate. <laughs> Still to come, a hunt for a stolen car. Potentially looking at doing some sort of T-Pack tactic on it. A damsel in distress. Got a seven month pregnant lady. And some tricky motorway maneuvers. Guys, you'll walk over this side for me. It's a windy afternoon in Cheshire, and interceptor Steve John o. Johnston is getting his motor ready for a long shift on the county's roads. A clean car is a happy car. But a gleaming bonnet isn't all that's required. Loud noise. Steve also has to check he's carrying everything he'll need today. Uh, just making sure the lights are working, uh, making sure the uh, appropriate amount of kits in here, so. We've got uh, the stingers in there, we've got plenty of cones, we've got some uh, signs, uh, we've got blood alcohol kits should we need them to go to the hospital. Uh, and just general stuff that we will need when we're uh, out on patrol, should we end up at any RTCs or road closures, scene closures. With everything shipshape and Bristol fashion, Steve's ready for the off and gets a call before he's even left the station. So, we've just had notification from North Wales that there's a stolen vehicle coming towards us, potentially down the M56. So we're going to head up into the area and uh, see if we can intercept it. We've got several vehicles heading that way, potentially looking at doing some sort of T-Pack tactic on it if we get it in contact with it. 16-year veteran Steve is an advanced T-Pack driver and an advisor on tactical pursuits. And he'll need to use all his motoring skills today as a traffic jam has forced him onto the hard shoulder. Whenever we try and use the shoulder, we try and use it with caution. So we'll be using uh, the hard shoulder just to make some progress up through this traffic. There's still no sign of the stolen car. It hasn't been spotted on any cameras for a while. But then another urgent call comes through. 56 westbound, three vehicles involved. 
much broadcasting now on RTC on the M56 where we're potentially going to be going. That's why this traffic's all at a standstill. Uh, we've got a seven month pregnant lady who's requested uh, ambulance to be checked out. So if we come across this bump, we'll uh, stop and uh, assess it and potentially deal with it then. Steve's now got a decision to make, go after the stolen car or to the smash. He opts for the latter, given that lives may be at risk. The stone's not materialised onto us yet. Uh, it's potential for it to be stuck in the tailback, but at the end of the day, we need to go and uh, see what's in this RTC first. We'll uh, make a risk assessment and uh, if we can resume quite quickly, we will do. We're going to be on top of this RTC shortly. Oh, so, uh, there it is. Uh, Three cars are at a standstill in the fast lane and the traffic is still on the move. And there are three people in the central reservation. It's a dangerous situation. Steve now has to check if the people involved in the smash, particularly the pregnant lady, are injured. Hi guys, you okay? Not hurt? You okay? You okay? We've got reports someone's pregnant. Which car's yours, that one? It's mine, so... We're on your own? Yeah. What we'll do is try and get everyone to the hard shoulder bit, so we just ask you to stay here. Steve's first job is to get the three people across the motorway to the safety of the hard shoulder, which means he has to stop all the traffic. Even for an experienced interceptor like him, it's a dicey job. Hold it there. Guys, you'll walk over this side for me. Now the people are safe, Steve's next task is to get the cars onto the hard shoulder to stop Cheshire's motorways grinding to a standstill. The pregnant lady's car is OK to drive. Though he's concerned about the other two, which have sustained more damage. The middle car, which's taken a battering, won't start. Right, this is now dead. Yeah, do you want to come and push? Hold on. Might need a push for this one as well, guys. Now it's just Steve's trusty traffic car to shift. Cheers, lads. Just stand that side for me. And just six minutes after Steve arrived on scene... Yay! It's not moving. ..the traffic's flowing again. Right. I don't want to have me dinner yet. I'm sure you're still OK. Paramedics arrive to make sure everything's OK with the pregnant driver. The first thing that went into my head, really, is you just, like, I panic because you just, you worry about everything. It's like, probably overreacting getting these guys here, but you don't want to take any chances. These guys have checked me over and I, I think, uh, I think everything's all right. With no one injured, the drivers swap details. Got a pen? If not, I'll lend you one of mine. Borrow that one, make sure I get it back, it's got tracker fitted. If you don't get me back, I'll come round and kick the door in. Even though it looks like a fairly routine shunt, Steve needs to make sure it wasn't caused by dangerous driving, which could result in criminal charges. The, the third car, the BMW, just hit him and forced him into, into mine. And that's consistent with what everyone else has said. You've come to stop or nearly come to stop. The middle car's come to stop or nearly come to stop. BMW's not stopped in time and hit the middle car into you. Two of the cars are going nowhere, but Steve is hopeful the pregnant lady's motor has escaped as unscathed as its driver. You've got no warning lights coming up on your dashboard, which is always a good sign. So the advice is, yeah, you can drive it, but if it starts to feel a bit funny or you're not happy with it, pull onto the shoulder, Ring us, get out and jump over the barrier, and we'll come and get you. But apart from that, I'm happy for you to, uh, to drive on. Though things may not have turned out as Steve planned, he's kept three people safe and the M56 moving. Just a normal day at the office. After all that, it was a three-vehicle rear-end shunt in lane three. Uh, no one's injured. 
everyone's insured. We've all got the requisite licenses to drive. Uh, there's no recorded injuries with anyone, so that's the best bit. Uh, so everyone's safe and well, and it'll be down to the insurance companies to sort out uh, who's going to pay for what, why, why and when. Elizabeth the First reign was under constant threat. Lily Cole stars as our I Am Will Queen in the second part of the new series. And the enemy within is tonight at nine. That's after Julian's given the runaround by a pig whose trotters are in a bit of a state. The new series of the Yorkshire Vet continues next. But first, a quick five news update. In pursuit, vehicle failed to stop, and out in force. <laughs> this is police interceptors. Stay there as you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime-fighting units. Hey, Police for Jesus! We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, left, left onto the five, three, four. On the hunt with their dog units. Right, me, right, me. Ringside as they go toe to toe with the bad guys. Get off the legs! Put your hand behind your back! Police satisfied, everything! Buckle up! Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Get your arms up now! Another day at the office. Coming up. A raid on a suspected drug den. If that was pulled on you, you would think twice about it. A T-Pack takedown. Get off the car. Get off the car. Get off the car. Looks like two nine mil rounds. And a late night discovery. You will come with us into custody, and that's the downside of coming out in Chester with drugs in your pocket, young man. Last year, there were more than 300,000 assaults on police officers involving deadly weapons. Occupants out. Attacking the police vehicle. Windows smashed. This isn't just because criminals are getting more violent. It's also down to the fact that it's easier to get hold of dangerous items than it used to be. I think just the access to any weapons has you know, got worse over the time. You can order a taser off the internet, from, you know, get delivered from America, work its way through customs, and, and people got these, they carry them on the streets openly. You know, when I first started the policing, you had to know people who knew somebody who knew somebody to get that sort of stuff, but now you can just order it off the internet. It's early evening, and interceptors Mike Geno Jennings and Jim Hunt are out in the unmarked crime car. What is the make and model of the vehicle ever? White, White. Style van. White van. Roger, Middlewood Street, will do. As specialists in tactical takedowns, they've been brought in to help stop a van driven by a man suspected of carrying a gun. We're going to exercise our powers of stop and search initially because we suspect or we believe that they've got criminal property in that vehicle. That's as much as we know at the moment. As a former army tank driver, Jim knows all about dangerous weapons. Unlike his partner tonight, Jeno, whose biggest worry as a supermarket manager was an out-of-date yoghurt. Tonight, their main concern is the white van. It's being tracked by another interceptor who's directing them to its location. It's a game of chess, really. It sounds like the vehicle's stationary. Whether it's attended or unattended at the moment, we don't know. We're going to um, get to the general area where we're in good striking distance and, uh, and wait for further direction, really. Minutes later, they get a call that the suspect has got into the van and driven off. Do you want the blues on, mate, or no? It's time to strike. Andy, we're sticking the blues on, mate, to make a bit of progress. Well, the vehicle's on the move. It's heading a little bit away from us um, in a place called Sydney Road. Another crime car has pulled in behind Jim and Jeno, and en route they meet up with fellow interceptor Chris Bucko Buckley. Now they have three cars in convoy, they're ready to carry out a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC. Where a trio of police vehicles block in a car from the front, rear, and side. First, they have to get to the van. 
so we're just playing a bit of catch up really and then um, hopefully when they call the strike in we'll be close enough to, uh, to respond really. But there's a problem. Heading back towards crew. Dive off here. The van is heading right towards them okay. and as the plan is to get behind it to carry out the T-Pack, if the driver spots the cop cars, it could jeopardise the whole operation. Yeah, whereabouts are you at the moment? Um, we're on Acer Avenue, just gone into the estate, so we're not going to um, show out ever. We're currently crew road towards the town centre. Yeah, yeah, we know where you are. Um. Jim and his colleagues on the strike team will have to stay out of sight for the moment. We're all trying to scramble out the way, really, and um, stay as covert as possible. Um, so the last thing we want to do is to spook the driver and for him to have it on his toes into the town centre or potentially as well, um, lose the evidence in the vehicle. See if you can start closing it towards Bentley. Towards Bentley, Roger. Ten minutes later, and the job's back on. Lights on. Is it going towards Middlewich or towards Nantwich, over? Yeah, the vehicle is currently Middlewich towards Lake Hospital. Roger. We're just going past the Grand Junction. We're a little bit far away, but um, the Geno's driving. We should be there um, in no time at all. As soon as we go 5.30, I'll turn the sirens off. So the other cars will come from behind us. Um, hopefully, um, Bucko in the marked car will be the little yeah. vehicle. And the, uh, the other one marked will go to the side. Geno's blue light driving soon gets them close to the suspect van. Perhaps too close, as the undercover car behind the van has seen their blues. Kill him. Kill him. Yes, we are all uh, lights off now. Up ahead, the van keeps at the same speed. It seems the driver hasn't noticed Geno's lights, although Geno has spotted him. There it is. Up is it? ahead. Up ahead. There's the van, just going under the bridge. That's got to be it, hasn't it? All three T-Pack cars need to get directly behind the van before making their move. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, keep us updated then. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's a few cars to get past first. And that one which he'll have to do without attracting the van driver's attention. I can see it. Yeah, I've got an eyeball on that vehicle towards me, Mr. Roger. Finally, they're all behind the van. Lads, um, obviously we're going to come up to the, uh, the lit section here. If you're in agreement, that's probably going to be the best place to do it. Roger, next straight section if we can, Roger. Everyone's in position, but will the van driver fall into their trap? Interceptors Jim Hunt and Mike Jennings are part of a three-car T-Pack team brought in to stop a man suspected of carrying a gun. What is the make and model of the vehicle ever? Small white paddy style white. Van. After some tricky manoeuvres around the streets of crew, all three cars are in position. The trap has been set. It's time to T-Pack. Right, guys, move up, move up, move up. The marked car gets in front of the van. An unmarked car gets alongside it, while Geno blocks it in at the rear. It's got nowhere to go. The driver is immediately cuffed, as he's believed to be carrying a gun and they give him a thorough search. Keep his face up, run towards you. you. Turn your face yeah. in the other way, mate. Okay. Okay. But they don't find anything on him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The same can't be said of the van, though. Looks like two 9 mil rounds. And cellophane on the passenger seat, we see. There are two bullets on the passenger seat, and that's not all. There's a big carving knife under the driver's seat. Unless the driver's a chef, that's a deadly weapon. We've got two rounds at the moment. It appears to be live. So we'll leave those in situ for the moment. We've still got a more detailed search to carry on at the moment, so uh, it's a good result. Along with the knife and the bullets... We'll take a seat in our car. Jim's found something he suspects might also be a weapon. I've tried to see if it's a taser, but I can't see if it's um, 
That, that's the number touch. Is there anything else in the vehicle? I promise you there's nothing else in the vehicle. What is in the vehicle? What? Nothing. 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 This is a torch. Um, it says a defender. Um, I've had actually a taser disguised in a, uh, a so-called defender torch before. Two metal probes across there and you get them disguised as mobile phones. Any inconspicuous object really. But on close inspection it doesn't appear to be a taser. But uh, what I'll do, I'll just try on my colleague here. I'll put the torch on. Yeah, and if the he, expendable one. If he collapses in a ball of uh, a ball of snot on the floor, then we obviously find a taser, don't we? Whether or not the torch is a deadly weapon, the knife and the bullets are enough to see the van driver arrested. A good nick after a textbook tea pack. It was all right. We we got it stopped. There was an element of surprise. He literally did an emergency stop, which. Tactical contact, well, lucky I didn't, we didn't crash into the back of him to be fair. Chest pumps all around. A blue fist pump. <laughs> I'm allergic to later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the man was arrested for possession of a knife and ammunition. The bullets were confiscated and no further action was taken against the driver. All in all, it's been a good evening for the interceptors, except for one thing. The van's got a flat battery. This is policing at its finest. <laughs> Go on then. It's all in a night's work for Geno. It's Friday morning and interceptors Dan Halliwell and Gordy Morris are part of a team about to simultaneously raid two flats linked to drug activity. In charge of today's operation is Sergeant Danny Haddock. Operation Stella, we're all participating in today. Uh, we're looking to execute two Misuse of Drugs Act warrants at two addresses. First address, that's going to be Team 1, uh, and the second address we're looking at, both very close to each other, 60, 70 yards in between. Gordy and Dan's job today is opening the door of flat number one. Interceptor style with a big red key. So well, let's get them in hard, fast and safe. And once we've got them under control, we can do it at our pace then. Uh, the MOE is going to be Dan and Gordy. We've run a book and I've said one strike. No, no pressure. <laughs> right, anyone else got any questions? Right, everyone enjoy it, be safe. Joking aside, this is serious business and Dan and Gordy know what needs to be done. Our role today is to do the method of entry, to force entry to the premises and initially go in and uh, secure any persons in there. KFC loving Dan's a big fan of the Jason Bourne movies. While Gordy prefers yippee ki yay to Die Hard. And they're expecting to do some action moves today. Give it a good welling with a smile. We'll know on the first hit. So we believe it's a wooden door with a little bit of glass in it. I've got every faith that you'll hit it in one. Though the last time they dealt with a door, it took a lot more than one hit to get it open. We had to rotate the hitting of the, of the door, really. We caused that much damage. The, the outbuilding was unsafe. But if we've got to get in, we'll get in. But one hit. Want it. Want it. Want it, wonder. Getting in quickly is vital as it prevents people in the property from having the time to dispose of any illegal substances they might have. Come on! The interceptors also have to avoid being spotted, but a bunch of cops on a small housing estate stick out like a sore thumb. Both entry teams get into position and ready to go. And then they get the go-ahead. Go, go. It's time to move. Gordy's got the big red key. They quickly nick three people. But we're here for a reason. We'll get you dressed safe and then we're going to conduct the search. Gordy's done his job perfectly. It's good, he went in first time, that was the main thing. 
three persons on, on the premises, all secured. Didn't have time to get rid of anything, so yeah, it's good. It's what we want, really. With the first flat safe and secure, Sergeant Haddock goes to check if there's anything fishy in the other flat that was raided. What have we got there? 70 yards difference. The search is in full swing. And they've already found some drugs, a big bag of cannabis. First seizure under the bed, that's cannabis, so it's a start. Back at the first flat, Gordy and Dan have joined the search team. So it's just a case of now to see what we can recover. Um, anything, any offences that come to light, we'll deal with those responsible, whether it's all of them or individually. But first, Gordy has to put his advanced driver skills to the test. Oh. There you, go, you got your headlights on? You're right. Is it right. Quick. No, no. It's quick, this. I'll do. Yeah, you start that way, we'll work around. The search uncovers a bag of cannabis in one of the bedrooms. Its owner is going to be taking a trip to the cop shop for further questioning. Are you coming down today, yeah? Yeah. Right. Right. The search team in the second flat has had more success. Back at Northwich Nick, Gordy and Sergeant Haddock go through all their evidence, including one particularly scary find. As you can see what we've got here, this is the, uh, the worrying thing we've recovered. If that was pulled on you, you, uh, you would think twice about it. Don't you, Gordy, but I'd be uh, getting shot in the back. I wouldn't be getting shot in the face. Obviously, there was, there was no intelligence that we had that there was going to be firearms at addresses, but like that, it's a, it's a 177 pellet gun. It's reasons like that that we wear the kit we do when we go into these addresses. We've recovered Class B drugs here. Uh, there's not dealers amounts there, but again, people sitting off in addresses will often smoke cannabis. A man from the second flat was later given a cannabis warning as was the man arrested in the first property. No charges were brought over the BB gun found in flat two. What is what? No further action was taken against the other people detained in the raids. Even though the number of accidents involving drink drivers on Britain's road has dropped by a third in the last decade, drink drivers still cause more than 200 deaths each year. No wonder it's a crime that makes most interceptors blood boil. I've got no time for drink drivers. Um, if you can afford to get drunk, afford a taxi or walk home. Um, you don't deserve any sympathy whatsoever. The heartache it causes, even for the driver themselves, when they lose a life or they're seriously injured, the effect it has on people, and they just don't think about that. They can't do. I'm um, happy to take drink drivers off the road all day long all day long. It's a rainy night in Cheshire and interceptor Ian Blanchard is single crewed in the traffic car on the lookout for dodgy drivers. But what he's most worried about right now is the weather. It's a heavy rain, a lot of standing water. Nobody wants to go out when it's like this. I don't want to go out when it's like this, but I'm getting paid for it. Along with being out on patrol in the rain, drink drivers and people using their phones while driving, 10-year veteran Ian also doesn't like sushi. And he soon gets a call about a very fishy-sounding driver. Westbound, sir, uh, Nickel, that's reported all over the place. Hotel Tango 28, Warrington Town Centre, we'll start making. Um, there's a call come in from a member of the public. Vehicles reported all over the place on the motorway. Got out at the junction, and he's now urinating against his car. So he's got out to uh, relieve himself. So whether he's had a few drinks, and his bladder's got a bit uh, full. So hopefully we'll catch him driving if he is drunk. Drink driving's bad enough, but in conditions like this. The person who called in to report the drunk driver has continued following him, and now sounds like he's doing even more to help. Apparently, the informant has tried to block him in. 28 received. All right, so the informant tried to block this uh, driver in. This driver then took a section, drove over the grass verge, and continued driving with his lights off. The informant is driving an orange minibus, easy enough to spot, even in conditions like this. All right, what's this here? The minibus pulls in to let Ian pass and he stops right in front of the suspect car. Yeah, 
Yeah, Lee Reeves, one, two, two, eight, the mark. He looks drunk. Hello? Yeah. Just come and join me for a minute, please. Sorry. Have you had anything to drink? No, not at all. Thank you. Oh, your words are slurred at the minute. Have you had anything to drink? No, I haven't. All right. Come and uh, take a seat with us for a minute, please. The man's denying he's been boozing. Just take a seat there for me. But Ian doesn't believe a word of it. When was your last drink of alcohol? Uh, uh, it's fairly recently. I apologise. When you say fairly recently, how recent? About an hour. About an hour ago. All right, I'm going to ask you for the sir to provide a sample of breath for analysis, OK? Sorry? Pay attention to what I'm saying, please. Yes, sir. OK, can you look at me? Thank you. Make a tight seal around this part of the tube with your lips. Keep blowing until I ask you to stop, OK? And blow. This bloke doesn't seem to know if he's blow. coming or going. Blow. Blow. No, you're sucking. Blow. Keep going. Keep going. No, listen. Sorry. Right. You're not sorry. doing it. No, no, sorry. OK? Blow. Blow. It is an offence I fail to provide. Take a deep breath and blow. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep... That's good, thank you. Second time around, he manages to blow rather than suck, and it's a shocking result. Okay, you provide a reading of 125. Okay, the legal limit's 35. You're under arrest for drink driving. He's three and a half times over the limit, but he doesn't seem too bothered. Did I hurt you? Did you hurt? You could have. Did I? That's not the point, is it? I don't know. The man's nicked and taken off to custody for a second test. Just put your arms out in front of you like this, yeah, please. Really. No, no, no. Sorry, just relax them. Watch your head getting in. Yeah. Wait, so it's outside, this is a fart. And it's all thanks to minibus driver Leon, who first spotted the car and dialed 999. I was travelling up um, the M56 back towards Chester and I come up against this car. Um, he was traveling really slowly, about 10 miles an hour. I stayed behind and put my hazard lights on and called the police because um, something didn't seem right. Um, while I was on the phone to the police, he was uh, weaving out between the lanes, um, third lane and first lane, doing 10, 30 miles an hour. He switched his lights off. So dangerous on the road. Thanks very much indeed. How has he managed to turn it here? Has he just uh, spun it round, has he? I, I was following him up this road and he tried to turn around and go back the other way and I blocked him in with the bus. Brilliant. So he couldn't get out. Super. And I saw you coming up the street then. Back at the station, the Nick driver still seems worse for wear. You've got them on the wrong feet. Even working out left and right is a bit tricky. Just walk in here and you can sit, take a seat and put it on in there. Apparently the driver's been out celebrating passing his exams. He's unlikely to have as much success with the intoximeter. Right, your lowest reading's 98. The man later pleaded guilty to drink driving. He was disqualified for 24 months and given a fine of £600. Ian's happy to have taken him off the road tonight. And you've got people out driving a car. It's just... Doesn't bear thinking about what can happen really, but it's always these people that walk away, and it's the uh, the good old innocent people that end up suffering with it. So yeah, I'm glad that uh, the informants give us that information. Stop with him. Yeah, he's off the road. That's the main thing. Coming up, Jim has his hands full. Stand over there. Uh, I'll stand and don't, yeah, and go anywhere near us, okay, mate? A web of lies. Are these your correct details? No, they're not. They're not. I might look thick. Yeah, yeah, that's But I'm not, yeah. And a smash causes chaos on the M56. Yeah, do the coming for. Every Friday and Saturday, the interceptors park up the patrol cars and head out in the big blue van. All aboard to make sure Cheshire's movers and groovers have a safe and crime-free night out. Get a, a mixture of receptions from the public. A, a lot of people like to see the van. We always get a lot of people approaching us, saying hello, and a lot of selfie requests. Uh, and it does. It, it, I think it reassures people if they're on a night out that there's uh, the police are there looking after them. It's the early hours, and the blue van is en route to help out some colleagues who've nicked two men spotted on CCTV allegedly taking drugs. Leading the team is Sergeant Johnny Marsden. Uh, we've got another patrol being directed to two lads who look like they've been uh, snorting white powder, most likely. 
the drug choice uh, cocaine. The cameraman's seen one of them put it in one of the pockets and we've got the two males detained. The two suspect sniffers have been stopped in a shopping precinct in Chester city centre. Johnny and fellow interceptor Jim Hunt are going to help out. And after a stroll through the streets and a quick chat with some party people... Get a good night. <laughs> Sound like my three-year-old kid there, always asking me for a piggyback. They meet up with their colleagues who've stopped and cuffed two men. There's two males in cuffs already upon arrival. Have got any drugs on them? They've both been seen by CCTV uh, passing over white powder. The man in the dark jacket is still to be searched, but his mate in the parker has already had a once-over and as he's clean, he's free to go though he seems keen to stick around. That way. Can I just speak to these officers? Just just for two seconds. I will, I will. absolutely. absolutely All I want to see is okay. what happens to him. Okay. As soon as I see that, I'll leave. Mate, no, no, you're going now, fella. All right. No, just give me two seconds. No, 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 go on. No, 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 wait, wait, no, wait, no, because no, he's on. got my keys as well. Just, All right, well, we'll get the keys. Just go, just go away from no, the officers no, no, while no, they're doing no, mate. No. Okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going in. Mate. I'm not going in. I just stand over there. I'll stand over there. Yeah, OK. Right, okay. Anywhere near us, okay, mate? While Jim has been dealing with the reluctant lever, Johnny has searched his bouffant buddy and has found something. So what's that? It isn't hair product. I've got no idea. No idea. How fast one five? Somebody's put that in my pocket. So they found what looks like a wrap of cocaine in the lad's back pocket, and Johnny soon discovers something else on the other side. So who's put that in your front pocket then? No idea. I would suggest that's a controlled drug, wouldn't you? Trying to use an excuse of somebody else put it in my pocket isn't going to wash, is it? Have you had any drug offences in the past? No. no. Am I going on my way or am I sticking with you guys tonight? You might be, yes. Along with claiming someone's put the powder in his pocket, the lad says he doesn't have any previous for drugs, but Johnny decides to do a quick check just in case. Do me PNC and niche checks, please, on the male found with a white powder in his pocket. And it's not good news. You got previous possession class B, amphetamine, so you've been stopped for drugs before in the past. So it seems to me that you couldn't lie straight in bed at the moment. You're presenting as if you're drugged, so we've got a duty of care to you now. If I send you off on your way now and something happens, then it's my fault that you're in this state. So the safest thing to do is you will come with us into custody, we will look after you and we'll ask you some questions about what's gone on tonight and the items you've been found with. And that's the downside of coming out in Chester with drugs in your pocket, young man. So the lad with the suspicious substances is off to the cells, while his mate is given a dispersal notice, which means he has to leave the town centre straight away. Have a look at that map. Yeah. That's why you're not allowed to go for the next 48 hours. That's fine. Can I, can I just ask something? So obviously, like I said, I've not got an address currently. Marvin lives out of Chester. He's got the house key. He's letting me, letting me sleep on his couch until I fly out tomorrow. The chap is claiming that he's catching a plane in the morning and his bag is at his mate's place, so he needs to get in to get his stuff. But the cops are going to keep the keys in case they decide to search the suspect's flat. You can go and wait at his address. These officers will book this young man in and then they'll come back to the address with the key and check it. Now I'm homeless for the year. No, you're not. I am. You're homeless for about an hour. An hour. The man with the powder is taken off to the nick, but his mate, despite being told in no uncertain terms that he needs to leave, hasn't quite got the message. You've been served with a dispersal notice. I, 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 come on, I, I come on down the stairs then. Absolutely understand that. I'm just Let's asking. go down the stairs. Just, Mate, please, come on. I, I happily walk down the stairs. Come on then. Let's go. After you. Come on. <laughs> Go, otherwise you're going to get locked up, mate, OK? No, absolutely. You go to the address. I, I'm, I'm literally just trying to confirm what the best way to go about this Well, is. the best thing for you now is, is a dispersal He's notice has been served. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave you're required to leave immediately. Yeah, no. You're going out the town centre that way, along Watergate Street. Do you understand me? Absolutely. OK? Sir. Go down that, down to that, that address now, mate. Yeah. and wait there. Okay. That's all you have to do. But you'll be there. It's as simple as that. Turn no, around, I won't mate. be there. Okay. The officer no, no, will be there no, later. that way. You're going that way, mate, down the Watergate Street. Don't come back into the town centre, fella. Finally, Jim is free of his Parker-clad problem and hopes that'll be the last he'll see of him. 
One's been locked up for possession of drugs, and the other one, obviously, uh, hasn't got any on him. But um, it, it may well be that he's um, he's snorting his drugs, and uh, and that's the way he, um, that's why he's acting like the way he is. So um, hopefully he'll go home, but we'll see. The man who was arrested later pleaded guilty to possession of cocaine and was fined £155, including costs. No further action was taken against his friend, and we don't know if he managed to catch his flight the next day. While all interceptors love putting in a door, or stinging a suspect car, their bread and butter is stopping dodgy looking motors. And often the most minor issue can turn into something much more significant. And people are moan as well and say, why are you pulling them over for a light out? Surely you've got better things to do. It's always the classic. Why aren't you catching the burglars? Why aren't you catching the robbers? Well, our best jobs come from stuff like that. Minor traffic events. A little light out could be you put your head in the window to talk to them, you can smell alcohol on the breath. Mm -hmm. Something so seat small as a seatbelt, or a seatbelt yeah. or a light, can always turn into something bigger. It's a cloudy Monday afternoon in Cheshire, and interceptors Chris Bucko Buckley and Chris Hawkins are parked just off the A34, keeping their eyes peeled for law-breaking drivers. We're just looking for people committing offences that basically will contribute to people being killed or seriously injured in collisions, so like mobile phones, seat belts. Keep our little beady eyes out, open and do. Uh, I think we'll get something, won't we? After 16 years on the job, Bucko knows all the county's best places to spot dodgy motors. But today, his usual banker isn't paying out. I'm starting to think this isn't the best place here. I'm going to move because that light's not very good. Bucko hits the road to find a better place, but immediately spots another illegal and potentially dangerous motor. This, I think it's a Sigma up here. Looked like he got tinted windows at the front, which, again, are illegal. The Silver Estate appears to have tinted front windows on both sides. If they don't let in enough light, then that's illegal. Sometimes when they're tinted at the back quite heavily, it can make the front ones look tinted when they're not, but we're just going to have a quick chat. Having a tinted rear window is fine, but front windows must let in 70% of light or more to be legit. Hello. Oh, Are you okay? So the reason I stopped you is because your front windows look to be excessively tinted, so I just need to do a quick check of them, that's all. But... Oh, right, yeah. If the windows are too tinted, it's going to cost this driver £60, as long as everything else is in order. So you bought it a week ago? Yeah, about a week ago, mate, yeah. Have you, have you got your insurance to stay with you or not? Yeah, my it's on the traders, mate, on traders' policy. It's on the traders' policy, is it? Yeah. All right. Do you want to have a quick seat in the back, then? The driver says he's insured on a motor traders' policy, which allows him to drive any car for business purposes. Bucko runs a few checks. OK, what's your name, mate? Uh, Nathan Hayes. Hayes or Hayes? Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. What's your date of birth, Nathan? Uh, 27th. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Eighty-two. Sorry. Eight. Bit of a Eight, difference. Yeah. Eighty-two. Yeah. It's going to say you're doing well for sixty-two. <laughs> right. What's your home address, Nathan? Cromwell Street. Okay. What's the postcode? ST. Uh, ST six. Yep. I don't even know what the postcode is, mate. Right. Okay. And you say it's on a trader's policy. Yeah, on a trader's policy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Whose whose policy is it? It's on mine. Yours. And what do yeah. you do? What do I do? Yes. I'm a mechanic. All right, who's it with then? Uh, so obviously we'll need to just, if you haven't got your insurance with you, you'll have to ring them, you see, to clarify it, that's all. Right, um, I don't even know, mate. You don't know who it's insured with? No. Is it insured? It is insured, mate, yeah. But you don't know who it's insured with? Uh, I did it online, through a company online. Right. It's all a little bit suspect. The driver doesn't know the name of his insurer or his postcode. And initially he said he was born in 1962, meaning he's in his 50s. But then, after a moment to reflect, he has a confession to make. I've got no insurance on it, mate. You haven't, have you? No. Right. So why lie to me? I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. I might look thick. Yeah, yeah, so. But I'm not, yeah? Sorry, mate, no. Right, well, we're not going to worry about the windows then, are we, at this point, then? Right. Knowing the driver's been lying, Bucko thinks he may have been telling a few more porkies. 
Have you got a full UK driving license? I haven't got a license. Right you haven't got a license either? No. Nope. Have you got a provisional? No. Nope. Are you disqualified as well? I am. Why are you driving? I'm dead. If you have an accident and you kill someone, you've got no insurance, you've I not know, got a driving license. I know, no. Yeah? What a day. Right. You're not wanted for anything, are you? No, I'm not, mate, no. Oh, thank God for that. At least we've got something then, yeah? Yeah. So these, are these your correct details? No, they're not. They're not? No. Why have you given me those details then? Should we start again? Yeah, I'll start again, mate. Bucko restarts by getting his real name and address and then has a few more questions while he runs some checks. You're going to see the car, aren't you? Unfortunately, mate. Well, let's, work, let's get all this sorted first, find out who you are. So, right, yeah. what's your home address? Because I take it that 16 Cromwell is not your home address either. Do you take cannabis or anything like I that? Do, mate, I do, smoke weed or You do? But I can smell some. When did you last do some? Uh, this morning. This morning, right, okay. Just do a quick drug wipe as well on you. Is there anything else? She's not going to, well, is it? Stick your tongue out. That's it. With the wipe licked, Bucko has eight minutes to find out about any more fibs the driver may have told. But having lied about his name, his age, his address, his insurance, and his driving license, the man has told the truth about one thing. He has smoked cannabis recently. Right, that has indicated cannabis, but if you only had some this morning, it was going to, it was always yeah, going to, wasn't I'll it? So that, The driver's going to the nick, and his car's going to the pound. Now we're seized by Cheshire Police. Basically a sticker so that when it gets recovered, everybody can see that uh, we're out there taking vehicles off people that have got no insurance or no driving license. Hopefully a little bit of a deterrent. There you go. I was just about to say no creases. <laughs> What was quite a minor offence has now turned into something a lot more serious, so just shows. Got to be in it to win it. Back at the station, the man took another drug test and this time passed, so wasn't charged with driving under the influence. However, he was convicted of disqualified driving and driving with no insurance and imprisoned for 182 days. But he's also facing a far bigger punishment than any court could dish out. Obviously, he's got his disqualified driving and everything else. That he's forgotten his missus' birthday today. Oh, just said that's the worst offence out of all of these. Yeah. She's going to have your uh, nuts for garters, mate. <laughs> Still to come, a hunt for a stolen car. Potentially looking at doing some sort of teapot tactic on it. A damsel in distress. Got a seven-month pregnant lady. And some tricky motorway manoeuvres. Guys, you walk over this side for me. It's a windy afternoon in Cheshire, and interceptor Steve John O'Johnston is getting his motor ready for a long shift on the county's roads. A clean car's a happy car. But a gleaming bonnet isn't all that's required. Loud noise. Steve also has to check he's carrying everything he'll need today. Uh, just making sure the lights are working, uh, making sure the uh, appropriate amount of kits in here, so... We've got uh, the stingers in there, we've got plenty of cones, we've got some uh, signs, uh, we've got blood alcohol kits should we need them to go to the hospital. Uh, and just general stuff that we will need when we're uh, out on patrol, should we end up at any RTCs or road closures, scene closures. With everything ship shape and Bristol fashion, Steve's ready for the off and gets a call before he's even left the station. So, we've just had notification from North Wales that there's a stolen vehicle coming towards us, potentially down the M56. So we're going to head up into the area and uh, see if we can intercept it. We've got several vehicles heading that way, potentially looking at doing some sort of T-pack tactic on it if we get it to, in contact with it. 16-year veteran Steve is an advanced T-pack driver and an advisor on tactical pursuits and he'll need to use all his motoring skills today as a traffic jam has forced him onto the hard shoulder. Whenever we try and use the shoulder, we try and use it with caution. So we'll be using uh, the hard shoulder just to make some progress up through this traffic. There's still no sign of the stolen car. It hasn't been spotted on any cameras for a while. But then another urgent call comes through. 56 westbound, three vehicles involved. 
much broadcasting now on RTC on the M56 where we're potentially going to be going. And that's why this traffic's all at a standstill. Uh, we've got a seven month pregnant lady who's requested uh, ambulance to be checked out. So if we come across this bump, we'll uh, stop and uh, assess it and potentially deal with it then. Steve's now got a decision to make, go after the stolen car or to the smash. He opts for the latter, given that lives may be at risk. This stolen's not materialised onto us yet. Uh, it's potential for it to be stuck in the tailback, but at the end of the day, we need to go and uh, see what's in this RTC first. We'll uh, make a risk assessment, and uh, if we can resume quite quickly, we will do. We're going to be on top of this RTC shortly. So, oh, there it is. Uh, Three cars are at a standstill in the fast lane and the traffic is still on the move. And there are three people in the central reservation. It's a dangerous situation. Steve now has to check if the people involved in the smash, particularly the pregnant lady, are injured. Hi guys, you okay? Not hurt? You okay? You okay? We've got a report someone's pregnant. Which car's yours, that one? It's mine, so... Are you on your own? Yeah. What we'll do is try and get everyone to the hard shoulder of it, so we just ask you to stay here. Steve's first job is to get the three people across the motorway to the safety of the hard shoulder, which means he has to stop all the traffic. Even for an experienced interceptor like him, it's a dicey job. Hold it there. Guys, you'll walk over this side for me. Now the people are safe, Steve's next task is to get the cars onto the hard shoulder to stop Cheshire's motorways grinding to a standstill. The pregnant lady's car is OK to drive. Though he's concerned about the other two, which have sustained more damage. The middle car, which has taken a battering, won't start. Right, this is now dead. Yeah, do the come and push. Another one. Might need a push for this one as well, guys. Now it's just Steve's trusty traffic car to shift. Cheers, lads. Just stand that side for me. And just six minutes after Steve arrived on scene... Yay! It's not moving. The traffic's flowing again. Right. I have not had me dinner yet. You sure you're still OK? Paramedics arrive to make sure everything's OK with the pregnant driver. The first thing that went into my head, really, is you just, like, I panic because you just, you worry about everything. It's like, probably overreacting getting these guys here, but you don't want to take any chances. These guys have checked me over and I, I think, uh, I think everything's all right. With no one injured, the driver swap details. You got a pen? If not, I'll lend you one of mine. Borrow that one, make sure I get it back because it's got tracker fitted. If you don't get me back, I'll come round and kick the door in. Even though it looks like a fairly routine shunt, Steve needs to make sure it wasn't caused by dangerous driving, which could result in criminal charges. The, the third car, uh, the BMW, has hit him and forced him into, into mine. And that's consistent with what everyone else has said. You've come to stop or nearly come to stop. The middle car's come to stop or nearly come to stop. BMW's not stopped in time and hit the middle car into you. Two of the cars are going nowhere, but Steve is hopeful the pregnant lady's motor has escaped as unscathed as its driver. You've got no warning lights coming up on your dashboard, which is always a good sign. So the advice is, yeah, you can drive it, but if it starts to feel a bit funny or you're not happy with it, pull onto the shoulder, Ring us, get out and jump over the barrier, and we'll come and get you. But apart from that, I'm happy for you to, uh, to drive on. Though things may not have turned out as Steve planned, he's kept three people safe and the M56 moving. Just a normal day at the office. After all that, it was a three-vehicle rear-end shunt in lane three. Uh, no one's injured. 
everyone's insured. We've all got the requisite licenses to drive. Uh, no recorded injuries with anyone, so that's the best bit. Uh, so everyone's safe and well, and it'll be down to the insurance companies to sort out uh, who's going to pay for what wire, why and when.